I am this. I am this. One. Number one. Imagine that I was hip hop's outlaw. Imagine that whack existed no more. Just imagine the media slaves keeping it raw. But I guess not, cause hip hop has unwritten laws. Hey yo, imagine if. Rappers could actually rap and ish Imagine if you could blow up just cause you're talented Imagine it without a label or marketing strategist Imagine if I had more than four bars I had to spit Side pose, imagine Adolf Hitler not taking the loss While waging the wars and Jesus had him been nailed to the cross And Jan van Ribbe got lost and never sailed to a shores History would have a different cause, the black man is the source Just what? imagine, black man knew he was God To leave forever and not die to sell war Imagine, discipline to find who we are before Money was me, we existed to go far Imagine if we did a rap about us and sports Imagine if we did a rap about cars and clothes Imagine if we did a rap about pills and blow Imagine if real rap was on the radio See, I imagined all ciphers maintain order And these ciphers on white beaches with calm water Just imagine that there was no such cynics And food for thought meant devouring gimmicks Imagine a world not ruled by money Where justice is that instead of laws and rules That's funny Where the price is a queen instead of crews are honey don't see the wealth in gold and shut, shut up and move Check you dummy it. Y'all imagine better days, hip hop glory days Y'all imagine you being dope and rap action paid Y'all imagine where the whack that dog different ways Or cast away some permanent rap Yo, on the day Just Yo. imagine if your best years rappers didn't exist Imagine if we switched lampers and didn't back shit Imagine if um nooms no spear was to rule the game Imagine if um nooms no spear was to pull the flame Imagine a crash landed from another planet and started rapping Imagine the 185 Tupac ciphers didn't happen To me that's unfathomable, in other words hard to imagine I resurrect like me and Christ to share the same passion I get imagine, me with pants sagging, my rapping Bridging rap gaps greater than the Grand Canyon Imagine, never understanding what just happened When in action I'm a trance, I babble crap you can't fathom I don't like sharing my plans cause that's my imagination Feels intrusive like Leonardo in Inception It's just like New Relink, my mind is full of conceptions Broad ideas that might leave you catching yeah. spares and shit imagine. imagine what is, what's will be forgotten What if I told you that you're not free, keep talking It's all simulated, now one freeze I'm locked in Imagine you can take away Yeah man, I can't imagine I just whack niggas on the wall of fame Where's ours? I know we will, but he missed the aim. Look where the target is. The main focus should have been on Hawker epidemic, man. Been doing this with no challenges. Yeah. Imagination goes wild when it begins. It's unstoppable. Like a fault fire with strong winds. Yeah. And it's on a point that's so sharp yeah. that it stings. My imagination is my superpower yeah. within. The superpower within is what I'm imagining with. Now I'm imagining that I'm rhyming with villains contained in a boxing ring. Imagining is not a sin. Yo, you don't even have to ask You're all welcome to the master class As we hatch the past present while we craft a bath From a shared truth and Welcome, welcome to the new dawn, the new era 101 We just passed the century The master class podcast Yes, you know what time it is Back at it like a crack addict For the hundred and one time How do you yeah. say it? Hundred and one It's just hundred and one, right? Hundred and first Here we go <laughs> That's why you on this podcast. <laughs> What's good, my king? You nice? Ah, uh, no, I'm, I'm all good. I'm Big all good, out, man. man. I'm all good. Us, Masterclass Podcast, OG Sam, Gary <laughs> GK, Head Nigga in Charge. You know what we do every single week? We are on a Friday. Um, I think, Donna, I just think we have to pick up ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Pick up the crew, pick up the students, pick up everyone who's just been following this movement, uh, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, like wherever we are, you guys are still there, whether you watch the episodes or not. I just appreciate it, man. Like I say to you all the time, I'm more known from this podcast than I mm-hmm. am for what I actually do in, in life, you know? And shout out to 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 Tebza and Lincoln Friends with the ciphers at the Word. beginning of the show. Word. Every Word. episode, we get those crazy ciphers from Tebza. Shout nice. out. They're nice. Big shout mm. out to Tebza, man. I, I saw the 100th, 100th episode. Yeah. They did the, the Salmon Beats beat. Yeah. Our beat, our beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Intro. Dope ass intro. Shout out to <laughs> Sam, Sam on Beats. Shout yeah. out to Sam on Beats. Uh, he V-Side our, 016. He was our ex-set decorator. Yeah. <laughs> AKA producer for the, for, the, for the intro song, man. Yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. Shout to him as well. 
everyone who's been involved with the movement. And, and they killed it, that, that 100 episode cypher, because it was Fire. dedicated to the master class. Fire. Uh, they killed it, they Fire, killed man. it. I knew no niggas could rap about you and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't know, uh, I didn't know, man. Yeah. Big shout out to you, man. This 101, we're back at it. Uh, how are you feeling, Shidi? How are you? Oh, no, no, I'm all good, I'm all good. Yeah. And uh, next weekend, we're going to Volmaranstad in, in the northwest. What? You got some invites there. Gupi? Volmaranstad. So you pass Porch. That, <laughs> it's in the northwest. You, 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 you pass Porch. Yeah. And then you, you pass Maclera, which is Clagstor. Shout out, shout out, Maclera. Uh, yeah, and, and, and then it's um, Volmarans. Oh. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like two hours away from Joburg. Have you been there before? I haven't been there, but I've passed, um, like driving to Kimberley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you pass Porch, Maclera, Volmaranstadt, and yeah, that all the way. That whole area, right? That mm. whole side. Which rappers do you know, past and present, from from that area? Maclera, uh, Porch, Ginger Trill is Ginger, from Porch. Um, Boiti is from Porch. Um, Maclera. Maclera is from Maclera, which is Clegstorp. Word. Yeah. Um, who else? Who else? Like, from the old OGs, from the old school Comies. No one came from that side. Like, even the Mutsuako movement, no one came through from Porch side. Mo mo from? Most of the Mutsuako movement was from Muff Town. You know, Muff Town, Rustenberg, and yeah, Pretoria. Yeah. yeah. How you feel about the homies trying to come back? I, I, I heard Muff Town Heights is coming back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're doing 2023 and 2024. How you feel about it? You know, that's, that's good. It's good for hip hop as long as they're not going to uh, um, pull, pull um, a cotton first situation where you have like 70% piano. piano on the lineup. As long as they keep it hip hop, I'm cool with it. We need, we, we need more. Yeah, keep it Mutswako. Keep it hip hop. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Um, Muff Town Heights mm -hmm. is a movement that started in the Northwest, right? They, they, we used to travel. No, 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 no. It started. It, it's. it's Mary Fitzgerald. Yeah, it started here. That's crazy. It started here. That's crazy. How are you gonna call it so Muff it, Town it, Heights, it, but it's in at first. It was it was <laughs> it was for Muff Town artists and Mutswako, oh. but it was happening in Joburg, and then much much later. They took it to Muff Town. And Which, it, uh, when, did that, the, when did it start it, it, from your memory? Yeah. When did Muff Town Heights start from your memory? I think around 2013, 2014. Okay, so it was after Back to the City. Yeah, it was after, yeah. And then was there any red tape, beef, slash, back and forth about the fact that they're doing Muff Town Heights the same place where Back to the City was being hosted? No, none of that. No, there wasn't. Cause there wasn't. I knew from, from coming out, I knew that, okay, at Fitzgerald, um, shout out to me at Fitzgerald, it's just the square um, here in Georgia. In Newtown, yeah. Newtown, yeah. I, I, I felt like I knew, see, there's going to be Muff Town Heights and then they're going to be back to the city at the same time. Yeah, spot. yeah. But there was never any hip hop vibes, like hip hop beef. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. It, was, it was strictly business. Everybody was making everyone money. Was, everyone yeah. was happy. Yeah. No, one, no one came through on some, nah, fuck this. No. Can't we need more. Fight. We need more of those, you know. We need more of those, you know. Uh, it's very encouraging, dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. I watched you on Chopping Up. Chopping it up with Mr. Zing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, you killed it, bro. You killed mm. it. Ah, word up, word you up. It. Like, the information you gave people. Yeah. I, I've been fucking with you for a year and some change. Yeah. But I had no idea you did all that shit, boy. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Like, I knew it was okay, you did one, two, but like, there's some things I didn't know that about you and about how hip hop has been feeding you, dog. Yeah. Like, your whole life. My whole life, yeah. You've been eating off hip hop. Precisely. Without dropping singles. <laughs> yeah, hip, hip hop is bigger than rap. So, for someone who's looking at us, looking at you, Sheed, what do you say to them right now, 2023? Can, can someone still do what, what we have done? Because I've also been living with hip-hop almost all my life as well. Yeah. Can someone still do what we have done? If, 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 if they can think out of the box, you know. Because people think they're going to make money from making music, like producing and rapping. There's more to hip-hop than that. Yeah, I saw your tweets about that too. Yeah. 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 But then what is it? Because we found our little niche and our little pocket that we slid into and now we, we're kicking ass paws. But mm -hmm. like... For someone, for a young dude who wants to be OG Samke, 
I don't even know what to tell them right now because it's like, should, I mean, like, is there money in hip? Can you live off hip hop in twenty twenty three? Is what I'm trying to ask you. You can, you can. If if you're not if you're not thinking of hip hop as rap, if you can if you can like broaden your mind and think like, okay, there's there's artist management, mm. there's shows, there's this and that, there's merch, there's all this stuff. Like, think out of out, out of rap. You know, yeah. you, and then check yourself, your passion. What do I like about this hip hop thing besides just rapping? Word. You Let's know. talk about you for a little bit. How did you, and I'll, I'll talk about myself as well, but mm. how did you sort of understand that? Because you were a rapper, I've never been a rapper, mm, mm, mm. but you were like, a, you, you, when you came into hip hop, the main thing for you was rap, the music. Yeah. Rap. yeah. Hip hop was rap, and that's it. Yeah. You know? When did you realize and how did you sort of realize to maneuver into making hip hop a culture thing for you or a lifestyle? I, I discovered that I used to read a lot uh, and I'm smart, like intellectual <laughs> Don't blow stuff. Your now, yeah, on. like, like <laughs> I'm, <Almost. laughs> I'm one of the few intellect, intellectuals in the game. Sure. You know, so. I, I, I noticed that when I was talking pe to people, some of the things I thought it was like uh, basic common knowledge, sense, yeah, basic yeah, knowledge. Yeah. And I discovered that people don't know don't this know. shit. <laughs> like every time I talk to people, I discover that am I the only one who knows this shit? Right. So I, I saw I saw like an opportunity, mm. you know. I can I can write an article on a magazine for people to read. I can produce a tv show for people to watch i can i can produce a radio show for people to listen coming up with new and educational information all the time right. you know so i discovered that niche like okay there's more to this shit there's a lot i can do with this with this rap thing with this hip-hop knowledge that i have yeah you know so that was okay. me that was me i like that mm. for me i i i realized when i tried to rap Right? Mm -hmm. And I was with my niggas, young, very young at the time, and I heard these niggas sounding so good when I felt like I sounded so bad. Yeah. But I love this hip hop thing so much. Yeah. So if I can't rap, what else can I do? Mm. You know. And I thought, okay, I know this probably more than the guys that actually rap. Yeah. They just good at what they do, but I can do the research, put the work behind it, you know, and become a, mm. a hip hop journalist in a sense. That's your strong point. Young like, you, you know. Like discover your own strong point yeah. and use it to to make some money. To make some money. To make some money. Use it. Use, use it to eat. It's not just about your bars. Yeah, is what I'm trying to say. That's it's it's not like. If anything, your bars are not gonna make you no money these days. And they limited. They can they can make you money this year and then next year. You need to think of more bars. That's that's crazy. So before we get into class, yeah, from what you just said, does the music matter anymore? For hip hop, forget uh, about other uh, genres. It, it, it does, it does, because at the end of the day, music like rap is the most glorified element of hip hop. You know, mm. it's 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 the main character out of all these elements. Whether we like it or not, we can say b boys graffiti, but rappers get the shine and they get the money. Yeah. You know. So we still need that, you know. We still we still pay to to see niggas perform. Okay. I, I, you know what okay. I mean? Okay. There is money in music. That's why. That's why. Not the money. I'm talking about. Does the music matter, or is it about like how dope, or how cool are you? Your social media, like your affair, your following, like. It matters. It, it, it what it, you drop does it matter? It 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 matters to 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 keep your name afloat. You know, you can go on tour. You can't expect a nigga who hasn't dropped anything since 2014 to say I'm going on tour and you pay like big money too. Yeah, no. yeah, so music has to keep you there, relevant and yeah. Okay, so the music is the billboard, yes. technically. Yes, And then how you make the money is everything around that. Yeah. Your, your X factors, your, you know, your social media, yeah. your... Everything even even endorsement. They, they, they can't endorse someone who hasn't released anything since 2014. It's crazy that you bring up the endorsement conversation. Yeah. That's wild. I think we have to touch on it because we spoke about um, 
how sponsorship, uh, how hip hop, sponsorship behind hip hop. Yeah. Now we're seeing a situation where, like, I don't know how you feel about it, but like, a sprite will come back into hip hop and ask an artist to make a song for a campaign. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the artistry behind that? Because it's like, I that soul song, the soul, you know, soul, Casper mm -hmm. Young, yeah, yeah, soul, yeah. soul sprite, right? But when I listen to it, it sounds like the other Sunlam one that they did. Mm -hmm. I think they did a Sunlam song a couple of years ago. It's like, it's not... You can hear, man, it's a campaign song. Yeah. It's not like... I, I don't hear the artistry in your music, like, in what you can do. I just hear that you can make a song for, for Sprite. Yeah, I, but I, I, think, I think there was a brief. Yeah, yeah, yeah There was a sure. brief, like... If we need a song for this, it must be like that and like that and like there was a brief. It's not like I just make any song about Sprite and see how it goes. Yeah. You know, you'll probably won't perform it and, and, unless it's I a doubt. Sprite, it's a Sprite launch. I doubt, which is crazy though, mm. right? So as an artist, when you get asked to do that kind of endorsement kind of stuff, how do you treat it? Do you treat it as just business or do you put your... If they're like, yo, give us a song like this, like so. Mm-hmm. Do you give us a song that's still part of you, or you just give them a song? You just give them to... a push at it, the McDonald's. I'm loving it. Yeah, but that's still uh, yeah, a bit yeah. Of so on, yeah, right. You can't you can't go and perform that. He did. He he gave them what they wanted, not yeah. what he would normally do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're condoning that in the hip hop space, where we, we where corporates and brands can come to us and be like, "Yo, I just need you to do this, man. Don't tell me about the other shit that you like speaking about." Yeah. I just need you to do this. Show, do me, show me the money, yeah. <laughs> and I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Culture vouchers. <laughs> yeah, culture vouchers. Them, know, not me, us. If, yeah, they, yeah. If, if they come and, and... It's like this, right? Uh. If someone came to the masterclass and said, yo, you guys can't speak about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because now we're sponsoring your show. I don't know if I'd be able to agree with that. Because of the money. I don't know, because... I enjoy coming in and being able to say whatever the fuck I want to say. Yeah, like, we don't, we don't have, like, limitations. But if we get... That's why, that's why, that's why we, we said that other sneaker was whack, <laughs> and they caught feelings, <laughs> and they pulled out of the podcast. Hey, man, I ain't seen that sneaker in a minute. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, yeah. But that's, that's what I'm saying, like, we wouldn't, right? But, like, if, if, I'm asking you, because I'm like, if money had to come in right now, and, like, your yeah. podcast... We want, we want the master class, but you guys can't say fuck shit, bitch, pussy, dick. You need to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. So you take the money? Yes. For real, right? Yeah, I can live without, I, I can live without, like, swearing. Uh, okay, no, no, I mean, swearing is extreme, but, like, they, if they structure the way the master class and how we deliver to the students, mm -hmm. would you take the bag, like a musician? If they're saying, dog, I need you to make a song like this. Do you take the bag? you like, you know what? For my um, intellectual integrity, yeah. I can't do that. I, have to, I can only make music like this because this is who I am. I can't make a song because you, you thank you for smoking wants me to make a song. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they, they can't control our content. You know? They can't, they can't say, come here and say, um, next week? yeah. We want you guys to talk about Metro Rail. Imagine. Hip-hop in Metro Rail. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, how, that's what I'm saying with an artist, mm. as a musician now, and I'm speaking to students who are listening to this as musicians, when they approach you with that deal, how do you approach it as, as a... Because, I mean, we're artists, though. We're creatives. We're <coughs> crazy. Yeah, but... but minds I, don't work like... I think, I think if, it's, if, if, it's, if it's a once-off... Take it. Yeah, take it. Like, okay, you want me to do this pay for it, and then boom, 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 take it, and then I continue with my usual self. Okay. And what about your fans now? Because I'm looking at you like, Sheed, you made that shit song for, for, for Sprite. Yeah. And now you still want me to be your fan. That was, that was for the bag. I must understand that as your fan. Yeah, yeah. Nah, if, you want, if you want my catalog, go there. It's that, that, that campaign song is not even there. Has, 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 has Jay-Z and Diddy and them ever done some shit like that? I can't remember mm -hmm. Jay-Z where he was like, yo, I'm doing this because it's for ballet or whatever. Or what, what's that, what's that, what's he on, Douce and shit? Oh, he did put a Douce bar in one of these. Yeah. I think, um, 
Keras won once did uh, Sprite oh, yeah. Ed, uh, Sprite Ed, Victory Kane did Coca-Cola. Oh, dope. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. And they stuck to themselves. They didn't like, it wasn't one of those songs where, like, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to listen to the Big Daddy Kane Coca-Cola song. You know? Yeah. But I just feel like it's a bit of a, as an artist, I don't know. You need to be. I find it, it like it's a sellout. Yeah, no, like you're copping out a little bit. You need to be creative with it. You know, if, if Pusha sold that Diet Coke song to Coke, you know, even though it was, it was not about Coca-Cola, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you can be creative I, with okay. it. Okay, yeah. well, that's a different situation. Yeah. Actually, from what you're saying, it sounds like Push is the best at doing this corporate slash <laughs> rapper thing. Yeah. Like, giving, getting the bag and still being dope to my fans. And just to the craft itself. Yeah, yeah. It's a very difficult thing to do, my dog. Mm. Even for us in the podcast world, it's like if they come at us with a couple of millies and like, yo, niggas, you all can't talk hip hop anymore, talk Metro Rail. Mm. What are we going to say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> even know. remember, even Tyrese was discovered on the Coca Cola word, ad. Word, 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 word. I seen that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> Always Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> but a quick one before we get into class. Yeah. This conversation we were having with the crew earlier. Shout out to my homie Slick does the sound on the show. Um, Slick, Slick is, a, is a millennial, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're yeah, just a reference point. Uh, and Nkuli and I were touched that Slick doesn't know Vinny Da Vinci, Kanyani, uh, Christos. Like, for him, he doesn't feel they have an impact in what hip-hop is in South Africa today. Those niggas. That crew, Oski. Ba 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 basically, if you don't know those people, you don't know South African music. You know, know. because, know. because, <laughs> because, you know. Talk to Ashid. You there. You were there. No, you are like, like, you, 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 you can't say, I, I know Kalawa, but I don't know Christus. Because the K, the K A in Kalawa, that's Christus. That's Christus' surname. The what? L A, the La, it's Don Laka. The wa, uh, the the wa is is Oskido Mlong wa, oh, so shit. so they put together to form a Kalawa. Uh, it was Christos, Donlaka, and Oskido. Word. Those are they. Uh, um, those initials they form Kalawa. Mm. You know until Trump is joined and then they form. It, it was Jasmine. Oh, Jasmine is, um, Jairus. Jairus. Um, Jez, uh, Zayn Mahuta. Okay. Um, uh, uh, ma, um, Mandla speaker M, yeah. and then the E is, is Eugene. Oh. So Jasmine, it's Kalawa Jasmine. Jasmine is Trumpist, basically, their initials. That's crazy. It's like, I didn't know this either, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about you, sir. Well, tell me, where does it now come in? Where, where, where does, does the hip hop come in? Yeah. Where does the hip hop come in? To crystals. Kalawa, obviously. Like, like. Idol. We wouldn't have hip hop without those niggas. We, 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 we wouldn't. We wouldn't. You must understand the the most hip hop ish thing we've had on the mainstream, like in the early years, was Boom Shaka. It's about time. That's that's Kalawa. Word. It's about time to listen to Boom Shaka. And then and then and then there was Bongo Muffin. Something. And, and then there was there was there was um. A bongo muffin, summertime. Samba nabu baby, tina That's from Kalawa as well, you know, in the early years. And then, 1997 on YFM, Oskido Rap Activity Gym, he was responsible for that. Which is he started, is still Kalawa, he yeah. started, he started, he started to give rappers a platform on YFM in 1997, Word, which now, was un, which which was not happening. Hold it there, right? Yeah. Where is where is Bo Christos and him at the time, right? Yeah, Bo Christos, they were there. He he was producing. Don uh, Laga, always Don Laga at the time as well. Yeah, he was he was before they left. Eventually, later on, they left the the label. But Christos was the one producing um, for Boom Shaka. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. I know, uh, that I didn't know either. Though. No, no, Tana, we just, this is, a guy you're a reference point. It's not a guy who did a verse on Boom Shark. You know what I mean? There was a guy who did a rap verse in Boom Shark. Who's that guy? 
I do body with my other father. When him, when him, when no, it's, it's not it's rap. A, it's, it's a raga. It's, it's, it's reggae, homie. Yeah, it's it's dance hall. Mm. It's not junior. It's junior. It's junior, yeah. Mm. Shout out to junior. But for me, I, I felt like it was you know, a conversation. You know, you know, you, uh, no? you know, junior was, was a, a member of the POC. But we'll get to that when, <laughs> when we get into class. When we get into really? class, yeah. <laughs> Yo. But he was doing things. I'm like, mm. uh, Sheet, yeah. I think I think it's a very important conversation for us to have, Doug, is that from when 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 homie brought it up, I, I realized that I I don't want to sound like an old head, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's a lot of people that just don't know like where. We wouldn't have this hip hop thing. There's like a lot of rappers out there mm -hmm. who are rapping today. Yeah. Some making shitloads of money. Mm. Even the the North Boys and the, they have no idea that they are house music cats. Yeah. Who are important and are a are like a vital part of how we built this hip hop thing. Yeah, it's 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 connected. It's connected. If you check one of the first Mutuako crews, um crowded crew from Muff Town, was signed okay. to Galawa. Oh. You know, and at some point, Bruce Sibito in 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 in, 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 in Muff Town, he was the one recording every everybody's demos back then. Bo Stone, everybody who was rapping, mm. you know, before he even joined um, a Galawa. Oh, you know, so oh. so but it, you can't look at him and like hey, he's a quite a hit. He did a lot for hip hop for Mutswako. At some point, he was the only producer in in Muff Town. That's crazy, man. Like, yeah. uh, the, the history behind it. I think the story needs to be told, man. If anything, if the masterclass can do a documentary mm -hmm. and just follow how house, house heads groomed the hip-hop culture that we're seeing and we're living today. Which is crazy. Yeah. Like, all hip-hop niggas like, ah, fuck it, I'm not going to listen to house music. But the house niggas used to listen to us. Yeah. So that we could pop. You know, Kalawa is built off house and hip-hop. I'm sorry, yeah. of niggas that, don't, that aren't even heads like that. They don't yeah. know the hip-hop like that, you know? So I think it's a very important conversation to have. Um, we need to look into it. One day, when Rashid is done with his museum, we'll do the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the documentary, Doug. Yeah. Let's get class, my Let's get into class. So I, 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 I think, let me start it, because mm -hmm. this is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you speak for a little bit. Um, you wanted us to speak about the history. Yeah, the of SA hip hop because a lot of people, a lot of people, yeah, people just buy Kibeli stuff and then just go without even. They don't know. They, if, I remember I had even a, looking I back. had a back and forth with, with Nota, shout out to Nota. Mm -hmm. And um, he was correcting me about something that I had said on the pod that wasn't factual, mm. but it was my opinion from what I had experienced, right? Yeah, yeah. And then when I when and then he said to me that. I need to do my research on SA hip hop. Yeah. And I'm like, but there's no book, there's no school for this shit, nigga. I'm talking about things that I've experienced. I'm part mm. of writing the book. Yeah. But for someone like you, you have this knowledge. Yeah. I'm sorry. How how and how and when do we start giving this to people? Um what one of the things like I've I've been doing a lot of research. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it is um for for the museum and the main part is for the book that I'm writing. So I decided that that's, that's episode 101, we need to, to, to break it down as a hip hop 101. Word, you, you know what I'm saying? From the beginning. So you understand how, how, how we got here. Got you. Where we are now. Sorry, I don't know who keeps fucking calling me. You know what I mean? So right, let's get into 101. Talk to me. So as a hip hop. Um, 1982. Crazy. <laughs> this nigga went way back. Uh -huh. this nigga went <laughs> you must do, hey, <laughs> bra, you must, you must do, you must do your research. So but, uh, you're going back to 81. You Fuck must, you I must, you must start from the beginning. Right. If you're gonna talk about hip hop, you start from 1973. This is the nigga who started it, Cool Herc. 11 up, August 1973. You can't just think. Jay Z started it, or <laughs> whoever. Cool hook through that party that you. Yeah, were. through that party. I remember on the radio, yeah. we, we were actually talking about that, and you were the nigga that schooled us. Yeah. Sent us a, a picture of the invite to that party. Yeah, like, yeah. Where hip hop apparently started. Yeah. You know, 11 August, 
hip hop is turning 50 since 11 August 1973. So, but we 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 talk in South Africa. Oh, shout out to Chris and Ty to the B for the merch. A word. MF Doom. That's dope. Cool her. Hey, yo, Chris, where's mine? Where's mine? Shout out to DJ Lux. <laughs> This is our new. We wear local shit, mm. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the the year is nineteen eighty two. There's this cat from Cape Town called Jemo. There's no there's no social media. There's no. What is he? Is he a uh, DJ? What is he? He's 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 just just a hip hop head. Who, some someone who likes hip hop. So what he did, he wrote, you know you know uh, pen pal letters. Yeah. He wrote to. Africa Bambada of the Zulu Nation. Word, word, word. Yeah. Have we spoken about this? Yeah, we've spoken episode, about yeah. yeah. If you don't know, Africa Bambada is the guy who organized hip hop as a movement, put together like five elements, MC and graffiti. Yeah. My respect. Yeah. So from the Bronx, New York. So Jemo would write letters to Africa Bambada and the Zulu Nation. From Cape Town. From Cape Town. Word. So he would receive magazines and tapes and and videotapes so that's how they that's where they got their graffiti from that's where they got their break dancing from that's that's where they get they got uh, their rapping from well, so they 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 hit up bambara for this mm -hmm. bambara hit them up like yo you guys should do one one two three four five he wasn't telling them what to do he would send them stuff Oh, it, it would send. Doing in the States. It, yes, okay. like what what was happening in the states, you 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 would send the tapes, like b boy tapes and whatever, the magazines with graffiti and whatever. So they they started that movement. SA hip hop started in Cape Town, so they started having crazy. Uh, they they started having uh, uh, b boys. B boys and DJs. You don't know what a B boy is. It's the breakdancing <laughs> niggas. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you know. <laughs> so Emil, Emil, um, the, the leader of Black Noise, formed. Uh, Emil is the dude who wrote the book as well. He's got a book out. Yeah, he's got a Shout few out few Emil. books yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So so Emil formed the B boy crew in 1982, which we know today as Black Noise. Mm. So that's when it started uh, in South Africa. Black Noise was the first crew, you say? Well, one of the first. The, um, the, <laughs> there was there was like a lot of crews there because they were com they would compete. So the reason I mention um, Black Noise it, it's because it lasted longer. And by nineteen eighty eight, they became a rap crew instead of a b boy crew. Okay. Yeah. Hold it there. Where is G at the time? Who? The homie that was writing to Africa for Uh Jemo. Jemo, yeah. Jemo, Jemo was, was the plug, like everyone... That's what I'm saying, what is he doing? Is he a rapper? What is he? Like, is he just a normal guy who's just a head? Because once, once we get to Black Noise, mm -hmm. where's Jemo? Jemo, Jemo is the plug. All the, all the b-boy crews will come and, and, and get the tapes or watch the tapes from Jemo. From, from Jemo. He was the Crazy. plug. So you're saying Jemo was the first nigga to fuck around with hip-hop here in, in this country? He, he, he was not the first... He was the first to do something about it that benefited the culture. Okay, got you. Oh, yeah, got you. You, you, you know what I mean? Got you, got you. So, with the music, with the music, 1984, Sipoku Mete released a rap song. Um, Don't know what that is. Called, <laughs> what's, um, his, what's his alias? What's his AKA? Sipoku Mete was a famous music. He passed away like a few years back. He was right, a, he yeah, was a fa famous musician. He was a ba bass guitarist. Oh, okay. So yeah. he wasn't just hip-hop? Uh, no, he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't. Was a musician. He wasn't, wasn't hip-hop. He just happened to release a rap song. Sure. You know, he took the, the beat from Grandmaster Flash, The Message. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, The yeah, Message. It's the, message. the same beat that um, P. Diddy used on uh, and Mace. On that hit, on that, head, don't head. push me, yeah. cause I'm, I'm close, close to the, the edge. edge. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm losing laughs> my yeah, that beat, <laughs> the original beat is from the message. That's the same beat uh, Sipoku Mete used in 1984, um, calling himself a boogeyman. The song is called Jiga. Word. Okay. Yeah. 
It's out. Okay, man. It's streaming. It's, yeah, it's, it's on YouTube. Just search for The it's Boogeyman. Not, it's not on Spotify. I don't know. Apple Music. Nah, I don't know. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to YouTube. <laughs> Type The Boogeyman. Chiga. It's available. Yeah, right, it's, it's there. Um, that was that was the first rap song in South Africa. Even though that was the first rap song in South Africa. That recorded. That, that, oh, that was that recorded. Was recorded. Yeah, gotcha. it's like it's like saying Sugar Hill Gang first rap song in 1979. But there were a lot of rap songs from 1973 that were not recorded. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So there's an argument that no, Huma Sigela is the first to release. A rap song in South Africa. Mm. So, but the, the argument is he was in exile. Okay. So when it, we, in the States. No, 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 not in the, in the States, in Lesotho. Okay. So, he was the first, it was the first rap song by a South African artist. You know. Okay. The, the Sipo Kumete one mm. is the first South African rap song. Not the Huma Sigela one. The Huma Sigela is, is... No, the Huma Sigela came first. Okay. But he was not in South Africa when, 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 when he released oh, that. Oh, that's a, that's, a that's a tough argument to have now. Yeah. Because it's like, he's a South African. He is. making hip-hop, just not in South Africa. And then there's a guy in South Africa making... So who's got the first hip-hop song from South Africa? That's I, I, think, I think it's... Uh, Who you give it to? Hugh? Brav Hugh? I don't know, man. Um, Drake has uh, Drake has broken a lot of American records. Would you credit that? Would you give that to Canada? Hmm. It's a good question, man. I don't even lie. I'll give that to the students, yo. Get us up in the comments. I don't know. You, you know what I'm saying? So that's how it's happened. And then 1986. Sinyaga dropped Chabulan MC, okay. the rap song, you know. So you had, you had musicians, people who had nothing to do with hip-hop mm. that were releasing rap songs. Crazy. You know. Crazy. Why would you define them as rap at that time? Because? Because they rapped on the song. They were... They were, they were not singing. They were like... I got bars. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Even that... Uh, that are doing that old school shit from the 80s. Yeah, like, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Chabulani. Uh, 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 cool hook in there. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, the, the, that's the history. That's the history. By 19, right. 19, 1988, Black Noise started making music. Like, Emil mm. started rapping because he was a b-boy first. And he brought in other rappers who were rapping. And the POC was formed in 1988 as well. By Shaheen, Ready D, Ramon. Shout out who, to who, Grandmasters. Yeah. They recorded a demo All at, them, yeah. at, at um, Shaheen's dad studio, which he owned with Lance. What, nigga? Yeah. you lying. Son. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you. Shit, shout out to Pralance, man. So, I gotta give him his fucking claps. That mm, nigga been in the game. He been in the game. You know, so that demo they, they recorded there was, was released as an album in 1990. Uh, POC, Prophets of the City. <laughs> Prophets of the City, POC. Not Prophets of the Society. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, so they dropped that album um, called Our World. Uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 in 1990. 1990. Yeah. Wow. So it was considered the first full hip hop album in South Africa. Why? Because there was none before. But I'm saying, uh, what made it hip hop and South African hip hop? It was, they were rapping, they were scratching, they were, okay. they, they, they had a beatboxer, they had a Word. break dancer. It was like a full, a it complete. Was, but like it had all the elements. All the elements. The artwork was graffiti. Yeah. Okay. That's so crazy. so that's the first hip hop album. That's crazy. Full album. That's crazy. You, 1990. Like, you know this you know this as fact because you How do you how do you not know that like how do you know that there was another guy a guy somewhere also If it's something? if it's not documented. I'm not saying they the first to to do what I'm saying they the first to release an album that was 
that that we know of. Okay. You, somebody might have might yeah. have had an album <laughs> in, his in his hard drive. <laughs> we're not talking. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about those. Okay, okay. you know. Alright, alright. So yeah. you're talking about factual shit, you don't tell us yeah. about nah, 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 nah. it was P way from Kai Kai. Nah, this is this is <laughs> this is SA Hip Hop 101. Got you. Got you know you. what I'm saying? Episode 101. Mm -hmm. You gotcha. know, and then 1991, Karamo entered um a rap competition. It was on TV. Karamo is a crew, what? Karamo is a crew. Karamo is an acronym for Katlehong Rappers Movement. Oh shit. Yeah. So So we're in the East now? We, we moved from Cape Town. Come now on, we're in the east. son. It's here it's 90, now. 90, 90, 91. 91. 91. We're in the East. Yeah. So, the East niggas now, just to piggyback off what you're saying, mm -hmm. the East niggas now have picked up the POC movement. Um, or are they doing their own thing? I, I'm trying to figure out, like, did they see more, 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 more Grandmaster and them doing their thing and be like, yo, let's adopt this and bring it to the East? I think it was, it was, it was an underground thing. It was from. Radio, when you hear MC Hammer, mm. it was it was like different influences. It was the movies. Okay. You know, when you see Colors, when you see Ice T, when you see New Jack City, it was like different influences yeah. from America. So they entered um the competition on um SABC One. What was it called then before it was SABC One? C C C C V. How am I gonna know yeah. that? I don't know that shit. So so they entered. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. What was S B C one before it was? It was it. There was T V one, T V two, T V three, <laughs> and then and then it changed to. Cause, cause, Yo, you have too much knowledge, man. I won't even lie. Yeah. How do you know this uh, shit? Uh, T V. Listen, nigga. I I do my research. <laughs> T V one was English and Afrikaans. T V two was Nguni. T V three was Sutu. Oh, like okay. Tswana languages and all of that. Word, word, word. So and then it changed to it became C, um, CCV. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. We so digress. back to okay. yeah. So so they entered the competition called um, Coca Cola Full Blast. They won that competition. Coca Cola they, Full Blast. Yeah. They they Crazy. they they got a deal with um, CCP, CCP Records. They dropped an album called Bram Music in nineteen ninety one. First Venek rap album. What? Yeah. Hey, Tony, you're blowing me away. I need you to yeah. pause for a little bit because I have some questions. Yeah. Right? So, we're moving from Cape Town to to the east. Yeah. Were you saying Karamo, no? Yeah, Karamo. They now come in with their own thing. You're saying they're not picking it up from Cape Town. They're picking it up from general yeah, yeah. culture, hip-hop yeah, culture. Yeah, the, there's, no, there's no... Proof or link of them getting it from Cape Town. Wow, really? Yeah. Shit, then what happens to the Cape Town niggas now? Because the Cape Town niggas, hip hop in Cape Town is big and authentic and it's underground. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big it's underground. Space. It's, 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 it's a big underground movement. That's why by 1988 you had the Rosanos, the Jojas doing graffiti. Got you, got yeah, you. Mm. you know there was like B boy crews, you know they were getting it straight from from the Bronx, New York. So that's, they were practicing the same thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Karamo dropped in nineteen ninety one Bram Music mm, the right. album, which is crazy. Man. Yeah. No in, zero influence from Cape Town homies. Yeah. They doing their own thing now. They they doing the, their Do own they thing. Do they know about the Cape Town homies when they are doing this? Do they know about POC and that movement? When the guys in Katlehong are doing their thing in the east, yeah, I think they did because they uh, yeah, that. they they were on TV and on radio. Oh, yeah. Oh, POC. Was POC. On TV. Oh, yes. Okay, got you. Ah, then, yeah. then, then then you can say that there's a link, Nyana. Yeah. From like if we see niggas in Cape Town doing very well. Yeah. And we're in K1, Davidson, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We 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 can sort of say that they picked up a little bit from there. Yeah. We can. We can. Okay. That's, what that, that's 1991. 1992, uh, Too Black, Too Strong, also from Katlehong. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. It was, uh, they released an album, Katlehong's Most Dangerful. You know, you can still search it, Too Black, Too Strong, Katlehong's Most Dangerful. You know, it's, um, it was two guys. Uh, Kalashnikov, a rapper, 
and King P, the producer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, snap. So, homie yeah. would rap, homie would produce. Yeah. So, two men, they dropped their first album. 1992. So now, now we have the second hip hop album in the East. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, sure. So, Too Black, Too Strong, 1992, and then Kalashnikov, the rapper, yeah. um, went solo to, to release his own music. You know what's interesting about Kalashnikov? Kalashnikov is the same guy that we know today as Umfundi Sunjebe, Holy Oxygen. No, I don't do that. I'm t I promise you, I swear to God, <laughs> Mfundi Sinchebe is one of the hip-hop pioneers. There's no way, that's, there's no way that that's a thing. Mm? I didn't, what? Exactly. That's Kalashnikov. That's Kalashnikov. From Kalashnikov. Too too strong. From two blood too strong. The same guy. That's crazy, man. Okay, I get now the consciousness, though. Yeah. Because hip-hop is a conscious thing. Yeah. So I get where, how he moved from being that guy to who he is. Yeah. All right, all right. So they drop, they drop in '92. Now we have Kalashnikov. A movement. Yeah, now we have we have a, a, a movement. Um, he, around around '93, Kalashnikov dropped a solo album. Okay. As Kalashnikov, and then POC dropped Age of Truth in That's 1993. It. Crazy. And they were now. Birth 19 88. 88. Now they have... Sorry to cut yeah. you. Their first album is now in... 1990. 93, you said. 1990. It's the first album. 93 is the second oh, album. Oh, the second album. Got you. Got yeah. Got you. So they drop Age of Truth in 1993. Sure. Now they have new members. Two new members. Which is Ishmael. Crazy. 93. Ishmael. Like Ish Ish. Yeah, Ish like, Ish. What's with the attitude Ish? What's with the attitude? Josie Ish. <laughs> Avulegi la masamo ish. Robaliteka ish. And and Junior Dredd, who would later join Bumshaka. He was a member of. He was, he was yeah. He was doing the raga um, dance hall, and then Ishmael would do the the vocals, the singing, and then. And rapping too. He yeah. He yeah. He also rapped, and then Ready D and Shaheen were rappers. What? Yeah. Ready D was a rapper? Yeah, we, on, 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 POC, on POC he rapped. He DJed oh, and rapped. And rapped, okay. Yeah. Shout out to Grandmaster. So th this is 1993. And then the um, album. The POC album. The POC album, Age of Truth. Get, gets banned. Oh, yeah. yeah in South Africa. Before, yeah, yeah gets banned. Too. Because Why? in 1993, we still have. Yeah, FW Declerc as the president, we still have white people only in parliament, That's you right. know, and they like controlling the SABC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, because that album had like a, a political content, you know. Okay. Yeah. Which so, is crazy. Like, what, what kind of content did they have? Yeah. Like, why? It was a conscious album. Like, it had were songs they like. white people? No, no. <laughs> it was like. What were they saying? understand where I'm coming from. Like, they would teach people about the, the, the hardships and the situation in, in, in South Africa. You know, that we're not free yet. That's gang you. Yeah, so, Mande so Mandela is out, but we're not free. Okay, oh mm. shit. But is yeah. he out in 93? Because he comes out in 94, right? Uh, no, 90. He became a president in 94. Oh, he came yeah. out of prison in 1990. So he'd been out. Yeah, but they busy. They... So this is the transition now between democracy and apartheid. Yes. When hip hop is fucking hip hop, hip, hip -hop. booming. You know what's funny? Like a lot of people are not are not aware of this fact that SA hip hop is older than Kwaito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you're telling me now, like yeah. history one hundred and one, like it sounds. Yeah. I mean, eighty. We started in seventy something. No, eighty-two. Eighty-two. Mm. Come on, bro. You know what I mean? So, th that's that's 1993. All right. So we we're, we're now in the phase where the country is going through that transition of yeah, and and, and it's rough. It's rough there. They they Towards again, they, they shot Chris Arnie in 1993. Don't park. You know, you know like, O.R. Tambo died in 93. So it was crazy shit happening before 94. So that album that POC dropped, mm -hmm. they speaking about all that shit. All that shit. For real, I need to bump that. Oh, I mean, I mean, I bump that. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. So this is this is 90. 
93. 93 yeah, yeah. So, same year, 1993, Emil started the Juice magazine, the first ever hip hop, SA hip hop magazine. The Juice. Yeah, the Juice magazine. Wasn't the Juice already a magazine in the States? No, I don't uh, know. No, no. I think it was Source. Not yeah. Yeah, not that. The Juice was the first hip hop magazine um, from 1993. And that period, hip hop clubs started. There was the, uh, the teasers, there was the reality, there was cues, and then we'll, we'll get to Lit Club in 95. Okay, so, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so now there's, there's hip hop clubs, there's places to go to if you to wanna, bump. yeah, if you wanna. Now, what hip hop are we pumping? Are we pumping POC and them and, and back uh, to what? What's the... uh, we, 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 Kara, we, 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 we're pumping we Americans. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who? 1993, Wu-Tang, Snoop Dogg, N.W.A., Ice Cube. Got you. Yeah. FT, yeah. All them niggas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, 1994. Yeah. 94, Mandela, Pantop, 94. Yeah. That's, that's Never Again by P.O.C. After... That was a single. No, no, no. It was, it, it was a single from the album Funk Flow. They dropped an album called Funk Flow. In 94. 94. So they dropped an album in 1990. 93, 92, 93, 93, and 94. Yeah, there's three albums in what four years? Yeah, five years. So they, they dropped Age of Truth in, in, in 93, and then they dropped um, Funk Flow in 94 after, after Mandela be, became a president. Okay, you know, it was dedicated to him. Even the video when it starts, it uses the Mandela speech, never again shall it be. Mm. Yeah, okay. so. That's that. That's 1994. We're in 94 now. So we, we're, we're in 94. We're now, about to vote. Where's hip hop? Where's hip hop? We're about to vote. Uh, now, now. For the first time. Where is hip hop? Hip hop, hip hop was, was, was still underground. Hip hop was big. Understand that hip hop was big underground. Because when you go to, when you go to these clubs, they were always packed and they were playing like a lot of American music. Okay. Because there was not enough music to 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 last an hour from South Africa, gotcha. you know. So nineteen ninety four, quite a blows up. All right, so we're ninety four now. Mm. Mandela's up. We voted last yeah. April. Yeah. So so so, April, so now now whatever. now now people have their own voice. They the. I they 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 starting their own studios the the okay. triple nine the, the kalawas the what what all then, that shit popped from ninety four yes what Arthur and them came up from ninety four I think I think Arthur uh, it was thank you King it it was ninety two like the what? the the label the label <laughs> was formed in ninety two and then that's why in twenty twenty two they were celebrating thirty years oh what yeah Mika. so. But like triple nine. Yes, triple nine. Wow, shout out, shout out Arthur, man. So Kwaito now in ninety four is, is is big, but on the underground. Remember when Ama Piano was still underground. At yeah. some point they were they would they no would one cared, really. The Pumshaka would drive around selling their cassettes, their albums, you know, because they were not in stores. Bootleg vibes. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I it, it, for, for King you, you know, well. while 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 Guaito is popping on the mainstream, hip hop is popping on the underground. Crazy, okay. And All then right. by by right. by 1995, there's there's Lit Club. Lit Club is in. All right, so we in Chosy now. We in Chosy, yeah. 95. Uh, we've got 94 with whatever happened in 94. 95. Now we in Chosy. What's happening in Cape Town? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to also figure out. Of me and when Sheed, did Cape I'd give it a nine to ten, even. Like beautiful, when, beautiful when project. One love. They never, they never we lost out. the hip hop. So ninety five, yeah. like what? <laughs> they still have the best graffiti, the best like B boys. Big Park was still <laughs> alive. <laughs> Where? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah the comments. <laughs> they never Please. lost it. It's just that Cape Town never dominated the mainstream. But now, when did they? When and did they lose the the hold on hip hop? When, when, when we come to the east now which they they they, the they, they they didn't they didn't 
it was it was never a mainstream thing in Cape Town. It, it, okay. You wouldn't you wouldn't see Cape Town hip hop on TV. You know, okay. yeah. Okay. So now, when you're saying in '94 it's booming underground, what yeah. do you mean by that? I mean, I mean, you now you, when you go to these clubs, there's Bo Amo and Bo Mr. Selvin rapping on the Where mic. Where do they come from now? Yeah, but still got one because. They like for me from what you're saying, it sounds mm -hmm. like they just came out of nowhere. All of they sudden. didn't. They didn't come out of nowhere. They they recruited each other. They recruited each other as friends, and then they started attending these sessions. This is based off what they saw in Cape Town. No, I'm saying there's clubs now in Joburg. Oh, okay, they cater strictly to hip hop. Yes, but there's only one main one, which is Le Club. Le Club came in '95. It's not even the first one. It's just that it 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 was it was big. It was started by DJ Blaze. DJ Blaze is from Cape Town and DJ... Blaze is the nigga y'all gave a lifetime achievement e yes. at, the, at, the, at the SARS. Yes. Yeah, shout out to Blaze and them. And D Bionic. Bionic, yeah. yeah. DJ Blaze and Bionic. Shout out to Blaze and Bionic, They man. started like club... Real niggas. 95. And, and Jassid of Bongo Muffin Word. used to play Lee Club as well. He would play Raga Dance Hall. Oh, okay. Before, before Bongo Muffin was formed. I, I yeah. talk to me, talk to me. Uh, the story's crazy, uh, my nigga. I, I can't believe you actually know this. Like, you know this, know this. From the top of the dome, nigga. From the top <laughs> of the dome. I'm not reading anything. Facts. <laughs> facts, facts. You, you know what I mean? So. My mic is fucked up. No, asking how many bars left. Oh, shit. Nah, 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 nah. Are we rolling? Ah, oh, we good, we good, we clean. But two. Because mind you, I'm left with like five minutes here. I need to start and then. Alright, let's let's finish this, yeah. this this thought and then. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So, Blaze and Bionic were responsible for that. The club was 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 a club for kids. Okay. When yeah. You say kids, you mean? I'm I'm high I'm I mean I mean. Primary. I mean, you mean you'd say? find a thirteen year old there. Okay. Yeah. Rashid. Yeah. <laughs> you find <laughs> a. Rashid. You find a, th a thirteen. <laughs> no, no, nobody, nobody. I think was over 20 because it was a club that, that happened during the day from 12 midday until 6 p.m. Oh, what? Yeah. Yo, we need more of those, man. L yeah, the club happened. And it's just hip-hop the whole six hours. The whole time. The whole time. So, so it lit club, what, what they used to do, they would play videos because the videos, uh, they, they were not playing on, on TV. Like yeah, the yeah, hip-hop video. Unless, unless you, had, you had... Um, Did we have that by then? Bob TV. Oh. Bob TV is the one that used to play a lot of hip hop. So we never had Boomer Channel O and all that shit. Like, nah. By ninety five. Yeah. Alright, cool. It's so ninety five. Yeah. So so at Lit Club, the first hour it was music videos. They played. Like what? So y'all were just chilling, watching a big screen. Yes. Homies at the projector, Bionic and Blaze in them. Yeah, you watching the Doctor Dre, the Snoops, the Tupac, all the all all these videos <laughs> that you don't see on TV. That you can just go stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> that you can just stream now. So we had to we had to wait. I used to leave Toroza to come watch fucking music videos at Le Club. It was not we, we it was not going there to 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 watch videos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it was the whole vibe because because like the whole the whole of Joburg like used to meet at the club, okay. east end, west end, so way to north, yeah, south. Yeah. yeah. So most of the rappers that would become popular in the future all attended the club. The Amos, the Mister Salvin, the Optical Illusion, the Squatter Camp. AKA. The no no not AKA. You never came to. The uh, club? I, I, what? As as what's the what's the entity? What's the group that we're in? In the nineties. Yeah. Alright, alright. Continue. <laughs> Bro. Continue. By ninety five, aka seven. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I hold the mom four <laughs> at that time. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? So Shit. Yeah, that that that's where the mainstream Joburg hip hop was built from the club. You know, because everybody that would blow up came from there. You know, this is this is nineteen ninety five. Right. As usual, you'll have you'll have people who are not hip hop dropping rap music. So in ninety five, we had Bob Mabena and Doctor Kumalo with Get yeah, Funky. Get they won. They won a summer. Is that a hip hop song though? Yeah. They, yes, it is. is. It? Yeah. So, so, man. 
Yeah, it's not hip hop, nigga. It is, it is, it is. The beat. Where's the chief funk? A brand new era. The the yeah yeah. It's it is hip hop, but it was like done by culture vultures. You know. So so from yeah from 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 Sinyakas, you had people who were not hip hop doing because they. Though those people were son, Bob Mapena and Dr. Kumalo. Were um were signed by Sony. Okay. Yeah. As artists. As artists, they that's they crazy. release they release that's an that's album. A radio broadcaster and a soccer player. and a soccer player. <laughs> you know that they were famous. Doctor Kumar was playing for Kaiser Chiefs and Afana Bafana, <laughs> and Bob Mabena Yo, is a huge radio that is DJ. Insane, my dog. I don't even understand how niggas let that go. Like, how did you all let that go? She, you, you, you were around. Who, who's? Well, I was a kid, bro. <laughs> who who was running? Who was running the labels? I don't because how did the fucking need a soccer player and a radio DJ have a hit single like that? Because there's no other single. Yo. And then you said Triple Nine started in, in 1992. Yeah. They didn't have a hip hop artist in between that time. No, they it didn't. It was just quiet the whole way. Yeah. Fucking hell. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Got you. Continue, sir. And then, 96. Yeah, now we're getting to the juice. 96. All these artists that were on, we used to go to Lit Club, some of them were selected. They dropped uh, The Mother Load in, in 1996. Yeah, we spoke about The Mother Load yeah. before. There, there, there's Amo, there's Ramesh, there's Brave Star, there's Snes D, there's Bex. So, so, sorry, sorry to cut you mm. Would you say that's the Mother Load is the first commercial hip hop album dropped that got into the space? It was not even commercial. I didn't even get airplay. <laughs> still mm, only Amu had a music video for Yeah, but the... Amu popped off that shit. Yeah. So, I mean... So, it, it, is, it is... Although it was called a compilation, hey, you know, so the Mother Load, the first hip-hop mixtape, was dropped in, in 96. Uh, it's called the Mother Load at Cube Collective. It's available online. Right. It, it was recorded at Cube Studios. Cube Studios, Lance bought Cube Studios, oh, and so it was... Back uh, to Lance? Yeah. But when did you say Lance came out? He came out... 88, with, with, with POC. Ah, we're 96 now, mm. the boy is still there. Lance would buy um, Cube Studios and call it Ghetto Rough. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. That's quite crazy. What was Cube Studios doing at the time? They dropped Motherload. No, no, it was like... Yeah, they dropped Motherload, but it was like... Um, a creative hub, like where artists, musicians used to record their stuff. Oh, got you. Got yeah. You. All right, so, so Lance cops that in 96. Yeah. And then what happens to the game? Hip-hop is booming. It's, it's huge underground. You know, Mother Lode, even Shorty Skills was on the Mother Lode. Loco, who later became a quite an artist with Ode Mist. Okay. Yeah. He was a hip-hop. He was, he was he was a rapper. He was he's 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 on the mother load, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. And then what happens? Ninety six, we get mother load, we get we get Lance Copping Cube, that changes the game, I guess. Because now it's like we've got a hip hop owned recording spot. Um because we didn't have that. We were just recording wherever, right? From eighty eight all the way to ninety six. Yeah. So but but Lance was there for business because by then, by 96, a Junior is no longer there. He's now part of Bumshaka. And Bumshaka is Galawa. Yeah, Bumshaka is Galawa. Right. So he's now part of um, Bumshaka. And then Jassi, who used to DJ at the club, is now part of Bongo Muffin. And... 96, Crowded Crew. Okay. Mutswako, Muff Town. The boys we spoke about yeah. earlier. Yeah, got you, got you. Signed by Galawa, they released their hit song, Inadi Placer. In it? Inadi Placer. <laughs> Google it, nigga. <laughs> Do you know? What trash is that? It's not trash. Apologize, <laughs> nigga, apologize to the whole of Muff Town. I love Muff Town, either way, but like... I've never, Apologize. In place. 
Yeah, you, you you said it's trash. Apologize. I, I said what trash is. I, didn't say I, trash. I apologize for asking that question. Well, so I'm sorry. I apologize on behalf of Rashid's history lesson. Nah, that's case. But I don't those are the was pioneers of Mutwako. It was it was number one hit on radio. Google it. Crowded crew in other places. You still advocate for that song today. Yeah. You still play that song today. Yes. Okay. Shout out, man. Shout out to them then. Mm. Those, those, are Mutuaku, those are the Mutuaku, those are Mutuaku pioneers before the double HPs before right, right, right. yes okay. crowded crew Mutuaku pioneers that's 1996 nigga it sounds like some reggae shit when you say it's but, in any place uh, no they had they they had some some Mufftown lingo that well that's how they used to speak in Mufftown yeah all right all right but you know I love Mufftown I want Mufftown Heights to be back <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're in, we're in 96 97 97 why, crew. Why FM crew. started in in in? Oh, that's when everything changed. Yeah, that's when everything changed. Everything. Changed. Oh, oh, yeah, YFM started and ninety seven, and then there was a rap activity jam yeah. by Oskiro and and Rude Boy Paul yeah. on YFM. <clears throat> it was it was not a, an original idea because it was happening. On Voice of Soweto, but Voice of Soweto was like a community radio, VOS. It was done by, um, there was Kalkanai Sessions by Penny Libiane and Zek Takile. Hey, shout out to Penny. Yeah, and Zek Takile. They had a hip-hop show. And on Zek Takile. Yeah. Both of those, those legends in the game. Yeah. Sure. I had no idea they were in the hip-hop like that. I had... Yeah. No, they, they, they... Straight up. Yeah, straight, straight up. up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but the, the rap activity gem was bigger because it had a, a broader reach and a bigger audience. Yeah. So that, that, yeah, that's when, that's when it blew up, you know. But it's blowing up in Jersey only because YFM has always been just Jersey, right? Yeah, it's always been, but, but it was, uh, it was online. You had rappers coming from Cape Town to rap, rappers coming from Durban to rap. Because they only, here's my thing mm. like, with Y mm. and hip hop, mm. is that it was only why has only been broadcasting in like how they but it was on the internet as well don't forget Where? that part yeah Where? Like online what? yfm.co.za oh shit yeah okay so people people from cape town parch wherever they yeah. could stream and yeah and then want to come on to rap activity jam and then yeah rap activity jam and then these cats there, there was um a crew called milazi they they went to rap activity jam they rapped there Mama Wami, Oscar mm -hmm. took them, they recorded that song. Oskido, okay. yeah. They, yeah, I love that, that, that joint. That, that, that joint. That, yeah, joint yeah. that joint, before it became a record, it was rapped live on Rap Activity Jam. Oh, and Oskido liked it, and then he took them to the studio. Yo, that's insane, my nigga. Like, it's, they, like the story you're telling me now is it's, yeah. it's just the whole thing of being able to... It's the same thing that happened with Composure. Mm. Mega rap that shit at Y before we actually dropped the song. Yeah. Same shit with these niggas. They same, did same. that thing on Rap Activity Jam yeah. and they made it a song. So, yeah, same shit. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. All right, all right. 97, Y comes through. Rap Activity Jam. Shout out to Oskido. Shout out to uh, Root Boy Paul. Yeah, Root Boy Paul. Shout out to Root Boy Paul. Later it becomes Lee Kasumba and Bad Boy T. Yeah. Okay. Where we at now? 98? 98. Yes, oh, 97. <clears throat> Even though it has nothing to do with hip hop, Ice Cube came to shoot a movie in Joburg. Which one? I can't remember the the name. For real? Yeah. Cube but it was not. Here. Yeah. Cube shot some shit here. Yeah, Ice Cube shot. But like ninety eight, <clears throat> ninety seven is it? Isn't that like Friday time? When Friday come out? No, it was oh. some some other. But later. Yeah. Okay. It was some. No, but that's John Singleton. Yeah, yeah. That's John Singleton. So, Boys in the Hood is John Singleton. So in Cape Town, now there's BVK, Brasse van de Kap. Yeah, no dumb niggas. Yeah. Now I'm now I'm up to date. <laughs> you got me now. Brasse van de Kap. Yeah, they 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 represented that Afrikaans rap. Those niggas. I actually used Afri to fuck with their shit a little bit. Yeah. I don't even know what I used to like about it. Like maybe just how it sounded. Yeah. But yeah, I remember Brasse van de Kap. Yeah, you know. And then, 98, Mr. Len from Company Flow comes to South Africa with 
what 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 is who we now call Jean Grey. Whoa. Mm. Whoa, 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 whoa. They came to the club hold, hold, in 1998. Yeah. Hold it right there. Yeah. <laughs> hold it right there. We're 98. 98. Jean Grey, if you don't know who Jean Grey is, mm -hmm. one of the best, I think, rappers ever. Yeah. Uh, I know the story of Jean Grey's father being from South Africa. Yeah, Abdullah Ibrahim. All right. Abdullah Ibrahim is as as Jean Grey's dad. So now this the is jazz a... musician. Okay. Mm. Got you. We're in '98. Yeah. The crew you're talking about that we know now is Jean Grey. No, Jean Grey. Jean Grey is a person. Th that that lady. Yeah. Yeah. She used to be called What What. Oh. Mm. Here. Yeah. No, 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 no. She never stayed here. She okay. came from New York. She was born that side when when Abdullah Ibrahim was in exile. Okay. Yeah, she, she grew up in New York, born and raised that side. But she's South African by blood. Her name is, like is her, her name is Tsidi, Tsidi Ibrahim. Yeah. Yeah. Like Doja Cat. Like Doja Cat. Okay. Gotcha. Those, those South Africans. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. You can't credit them and say, hey, that's the first what what to do what what. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, I got you. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was like a milestone for, for SA Hip Hop. That is crazy. That is a milestone. Yeah. Man. People don't talk about that type of shit. Man. Yeah. Jean Grey and, and, and Abdullah Ibrahim, they've got a big impact in our, in our culture. Yeah. All right, 98, that happens. And then 99, then 99, crazy shit starts to happen. Word. Mischief drops an album. Life. R.I.P. Mischief. Yeah. Life from all angles. Specs drop an album, Rhymes I Wrote. Shout out to Specs. Squatter Camp drops a compilation, like a lot so of rappers. This is what, 99? 99, yeah. Right. Squatter Camp drops a squatter, a squatter compilation, you know. And then there's a huge underground movement. Now there's sessions, there's your Black Sunday, there's, and then came Slag Ace, there's 1808, there's Flash Jam, there's, there's sessions, there's hip hop sessions everywhere. Okay. You, you know, still underground though, right? We're still underground. Yeah, we still we still underground. We right. still underground. We the, the only time the only time you became you become famous is when you go to YFM and rap on Rap Activity Jam, and then, boom. And how 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 big do you get though? Mm? Like, are you on the same level as a, quite artist at the time? No, no, you're not. You're not, no. You're not. Okay, got you. All right, ninety nine, got you. You're not, but, the. The support, like hip hop heads, they were they were booming, like, and then Kwaito started getting intimidated, and then you started hearing songs like Asimo State, um, and then Wandi and Chaba started Luxion Culture in ninety nine. Oh man, R. I. P. Wandi, dog. Yeah, R. I. P. Wandi. That's crazy. One of the first local brands. That's insane. You know. Now we're into merch. <clears throat> yeah, you know, you know Zola used to go to Lit Club. Nah, nigga, I don't <laughs> Zola, I know that. Z Zola was an MC. <laughs> Zola was a rapper. He had dreadlocks. Um his what? name. What? Yeah, he had dread. He only they cut him off when he got the Yuzo Yuzo role. I win. Mean, uh, yeah. Oh, I thought. I'm telling you. Zola, Zola was an MC, his name was Kush as a rapper. Oh, he was called Kush. Shout out to Zola, you know? the Zola um, legend. Bricks was a rapper, was part of the uh, crew. This is before Wheel of Steel. Yeah, yeah, before, before the quite the shit. Um, Speedy, Speedy and, and Bricks were members of Intimate. Intimate was a hip hop crew. Okay, I don't know Intimate. Intimate, yeah, it was like... This and, is 99 still. And, uh, no, 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 that's, that's, I was in just, oh. yeah, it's before, it's before the, the Kwaito shit happened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just showing you that some of these Kwaito niggas were, were rappers, like hardcore hip hop hits. You know mm. what I mean? It's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite crazy. Even, even, even Cheese Cop was influenced by Onyx. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that though. Yeah. I can see that, you know, Bo, Bo, Onyx is, and, and She's got was the same shit. Because them niggas also yeah, now, yeah. Oh, man, she's got <laughs> yeah. mama. Yeah. So, Onyx, fucking yeah, Onyx. yeah. Crazy, that's, that, that's 99. Those are niggas I actually used to grow up listening to. Like, I never, I think with me, I got into a space where I listened to a lot of American hip hop, but I never yeah. really fucked with South African hip hop in like 99, 2000, 2001, 2003. I was listening to there a was lot not, of- There was not a lot of it. It was here and there. 
in the underground, like you were saying. Yeah. We and haven't we, we haven't hit the commercial space though. We right? haven't. We haven't. And we're in ninety nine two thousand. Yeah, nine to nine. We still haven't gone commercial. But now we have Amu, we have Southern, we have Briggs. They're underground. Have... They don't have albums out. Oh, shit. So the only people that know them are niggas at Lake Club. Yeah, that if you go to shows to sessions, you that, that's where guys. you know you know there's niggas. Pro was pro around at the time. Not yet. Pro. Pro came around. Like 2001, like at sessions and at all right, battles. All right. all right, so 99 dope year, crazy. Hip hop starts to get onto a more visible space. Right? Yeah, yeah. 2000. The year 2000. The year 2000. What happens in 2000? What happened in, in year 2000, hip hop wise? Monumental things that you, milestones, that, we never reached nothing that you remember. Not much, not much, because in 2000, there's, there's, I don't think, I don't know of any album that came out, but the oh. movement, the movement was big, you know. We're on TV now. Yeah. There's, there's, the channel and them around 2000, right? Yeah. But like, yeah, they are, they are around. They're they MCV, time, yeah. so our videos are now. Yeah, uh, Miss, videos Chief, are... Miss Chief has a show now on, on, on channel or a hip hop show. What, 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 yeah. what hip hop show? Um, he. It's a music show, like, like it was presented by. So, so, so hip hop was being looked at now in a in a corporate space where we had a TV show. When was the first hip hop TV show? I'm not sure about the exact date or, or year, but I know that um, Ms. Chief presented um, a hip hop show, and then there was later on, but that's much later. Proverb also presented a hip hop show on on Channel O. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's way later. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, now, that's like, yeah, that's, that's now, the, now type shit. The, 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 that's way later. That's like after 2005, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's, let's move on. 2000, not too crazy. Mm, for 2001. Hip-hop. What happens? Uh, Squatter Camp drops um, Squatter Campaign, their, oh. their first album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was nice. Well, they dropped something before. Uh, it was a compilation. It was yeah. different artists. It came out as Squatter Camp, but it was not Squatter Camp songs. I got you. Yeah. Got you. So, 2001, they dropped their first album called Squatter Campaign, and it's nine of them. Mm. Slicker, Flabba, blah, 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 yeah. all of them, you know. Nemza, Boza, yeah. Before they were Infa. even, before I, before <laughs> they were even, before, before they were even called that, you know. They changed, Sugar Smacks. They, they changed, they changed their, their names when they were signed to Galo later. Because Squatter Camp was Phantom Slick, who, who became Slicker later. Word. It was Flabba Gasta, Flabba. Flabba. Nemesis, Nemza. Nemza, yeah. And Initial M, Nish. Nish. And then you had... Um, Baza. Infa, Infa. Infa in, Dizzle. In, yeah, Infa Nell. Infa Nell at yeah, the time. at the time. Crazy. Then you had Boss. Which came Boss. Boss, yeah. You don't like Boss that much. No? And, and why? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you talk about him, it's like, fuck that nigga. Nah, never. He, <laughs> he my people, he my people. Word, word, word. And then, yeah. So. They when dropped... did Velo and him come in? But later. I'll tell you a story of Rilo. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> in 2000, 2000? 2001. 2001. And then uh, Dead Press came to. The baseline, they just crazy. Had that album. Who bought them? Jassy and Admiral. I don't remember who, who brought them. Was it them. this Thursday? You know, so they, <laughs> at the baseline. They, they, yeah, they performed at the baseline. Crazy. They killed it. They, they came back. Dead Prez in, in, in 2000? And? Yeah. 2001. Yeah. Dead Prez came here. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, man. And sure. later that year, they came back for Black August. What's that? Uh, it, it was it a was, um, concert in, at Park Station. So there's. there's <laughs> There's Dead Press, there's Talib Kweli. <laughs> hey, listen, Talib Jive, hey, listen. Yeah, so it's, it's 2001. Oh. It's 2001, there's um, Black August Park Station, Dead Press, Talib Kweli, Black Thought. Crazy. Uh, Cheru the Damager. Crazy. Squatter Camp, Bongo Muffin. What? Do Me From The Volume. Hey, yo, that's a lineup that can sell today. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, that was... That was the lineup. Mm-hmm. A, a, a Black August is a concert 
that happens every year, different country. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So they were in Zion. They in 2001. 2001. They were in 2001. They were in, in South Africa, Johannesburg Park and Station. Park Station. <laughs> yeah. Park Station used to throw some crazy party. Even yeah. Club Club Y was at, yeah. at, at Park, Park Station. Park Station used to host mad parties. Mad parties. Word. And then 2001, Zwai Bala wins best rap at the Summers. Okay. You know that line from Amo. Who okay. gave Zwai the Pause award? It Pause it there. Pause <laughs> <laughs> it I know that part. Yeah. That's what I was like, hold it right there. Son. Yeah. Right. When, 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 when does the, the, does the summer start? 94. Way back. Yeah. Okay, cool. When does the rap category in, in the summers come in? From the beginning. You lying, sorry. Yeah. So, so you had, you, that's why you, that's why Bob Mappen and Dr. Kumalo won, won it in the, 95. Won the summer for best rap, you yeah. right. Okay, okay. Now we're in 2001. 2001, Zwai Bala takes it. And the winner is Zwai Bala. Why are people hey. upset at that? Yeah. Why are people touched about that? Because they... Why they, are the heads touched? Because, because it, was, it was some gospel rap and they ignored Squatter Camp was out. Like there was a lot of albums that were out, mm. but they not in shelves. I hear you. I hear you. Underground. We still. Underground. Yeah, we still underground. But, but now, this but is 2001, we're still underground. Yeah, we're still underground. Should, this shit started in 1988. 88. Yeah, still underground. All right, talk to me. 2002. Yeah, what happens? So we so we lose the summer to Zwai. Yeah. <laughs> 2002, Squatter Camp drops cut and join. Woo! Manisa, rao, rao. That changed everything. Changed everything. That baby. changed everything. Fucked it up. Mm. Fucked the game up. Mm. They fucked the game up. I think, I think, from the, the history you've, you've put us on from 88 yeah. to 2002, mm. there's been a lot of change. We've gone through the whole history, right? Yeah. There's been a lot of change in hip-hop. Yeah. But once that shit happened, where Squatter dropped cuts and joined, mm. I think that made everyone, including yourself, look mm. at hip-hop differently. Yeah, it made, it, it made the industry take hip-hop seriously. Now you have, at events, a hip-hop flow. It's, mm. it's hip-hop versus Kwaito, hip-hop and house. Ooh. Now they start, they start to accommodate hip-hop. Crazy. You know? Now, is hip-hop now alive in terms of are we making Skrilla? No, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. We're what? Not, that album sold though. We, we, we're not, we're not, we're not we're business people. We're not business people yet. We're just drinking 2002, <laughs> 2002. And this, chilling at the club. <laughs> uh, this guy, Jimmy B, wins the summer. He's, Jimmy B, who's Jimmy B? Jimmy B was some rapper. He was from Sierra Leone, but he was based in South Africa. Mm. You know? Never yeah. heard of him. He, he wins the summer. For what? Best rap Best album? Best rap album, yeah. That's crazy. Y'all niggas need to give them away. Uh, right? You know what I'm saying? So, okay, fine. 2003. That's okay, fine. <laughs> 2003. <laughs> Squatter Camp wins the summer. Four. Independent. Four. Four, four, four. four. Cut and join. In? The summer. The summer. 2003. 2003. All right. That's gotcha. that, that, that. Now, this is the first that we, award that we celebrated. That we? <laughs> <laughs> like, we know these guys. Like, these oh, guys are man, us. These are our niggas. These guys are us. Oh, this is hip hop. Yeah. Oh, so 20, 2003. Is now when we're like, okay, hip hop is on the map and hip hop is making money and it's in a commercial. We're no longer underground now. Now, here's my question before yeah. you go too far, right? Is Squatter Camp responsible and give them the credit if it's due mm -hmm. for taking hip hop from underground to, to the, the mainstream? mainstream? Of course, of course. Because after winning that award in 2003, independently, Sipostola signs them to Galo. Okay. So once Squatter Camp is signed, all the labels started signing rappers. You Crazy. know? Okay. Proverb got signed. Mr. Selvin got signed. Hidden Force um, got signed. Oh, yeah. You know? And um, Amo also dropped Life Rap and Drama. Okay. In, in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in, in 2003. Oh, that, that was his debut. Yeah. Attention, attention. With, with Mr. Selvin and there, Proverb. There's hits on that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so, one of the, for me, still, like one of the most, the best constructed hip-hop album we've ever had is that fucking album, Nigga Amore. 
it's like this, it's unskippable. That you play everything yeah. there. Now, everybody signing rappers. Rappers is on, um, hip hop is on radio every day now. Word. Where's Lance? Lance is still running his ghetto rap. He's got, he's got scheme. He's got Zola. He's got a lot of quite gotcha. artists. Yeah. Clean, 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 clean. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So 2003. Yeah. That, that's 2003. 2004. We were. We we everywhere, nigga. <laughs> 2004 commercial commercial. We everywhere. Word. We we have she's ness now we on TV. What? She's in 2004. 2004. We How have was we have oh, shit. hype magazine now. 2004. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to we fucking have, Hype Magazine. That's why we put you guys out here mm, every week because you know this is a crazy fucking piece of hip hop. Uh, it's a hip hop. 2000 and, 2004, we're everywhere. Radio shows, there's hip hop shows, there's magazines, there's. We're everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Now we start having our music videos are being played on MTV Bass, MTV Channel O. Everywhere, yeah. All right. Who's the hottest nigga in 2004? Hardest nigga in 2004. Still, sorry to cut you. Mm. Still squatter. Still squatter, but now there's this peach black afro. Man, it's a peach black. Well, that was in 2004. Afro, yeah. Afro. Yeah. 2006? No, 2000 and 2004. He, he won the Metro Award in 2005 of that album. That album was crazy. Yeah, man. it was produced by DJ Clee. Yeah, that album was Shout produced out to by Cleo, DJ Clee. Uh, we love steel production. Yeah. That shit is crazy, man. You, you know what I'm saying? So there's there's a lot of hit songs. Okay. Yeah, that time, you know. So Pitch Black wins the summer that year. Not the summer. He wins he wins the metro. He wins the metro. In 2005. Squatter Camp takes it again. For Cut and Join still? No, 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 no. Cut and Join is 2002. It wins in 2003. Sure. So in 2003, they release Mkuku Function. Which Uzo is also Zumo, fucking crazy. Yeah. Uzo Zumo, That's the one yeah. you know, Slick. <laughs> <laughs> so they dropped that in 2003. They win again the award in, in 2004. For a back to back, deserved, squad a camp. Well deserved. Yeah. Sure. 2005, Mr. Selvin takes it. Yeah, that was also a crazy album. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know, Mr. Selvin. What's the, what's the name of that album? The Formula. Still, still up there. Yeah. Probably top 10 for me of albums released in 2005 ever. is crazy because now... Yeah. Here. Mm. It's a hip-hop, not in general. 2005, crazy. Now there's Pro Kid. There's Hidden Force. Mm. There's... Optical Illusion in my album. There's, there's, there's Murafi. There's Murafi. Mm. There's Dukes. Mm. There's, that's crazy now. Like, mm. there's... there's it's the, it's the, I think 2005 was maybe the year of the cruise, because the cruise came out. Yeah, the, the, the cruise. Did they, do you think maybe they followed the squatter formula for them to think that, you know what, I can't make it as a solo cat, mm -hmm. so let me rope in my niggas? No, the, the, cats, the cats were always there underground. You know, it's just that squatter camp blew up first. There were, there, there were like a lot of crews. Like, Word. yeah, there, there were a lot... Squatter Camp used um, the, the Wu Tan blueprint. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Uh, you Facts. know, and Shout they, out to, to all them homies. They localized it. But 2005, it was crazy. Now we're booming. Now we, we're booming. We're now no longer underground. We're no longer underground. So you're saying in, in SA hip hop history, in 2004 5 was the transition from being, we're killing it down here and everyone yeah. can see us. Now y'all can see us. 2005, Squatter Camp went platinum, Peach Black. Afro went. And that's a different platinum, not this platinum yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pitch Black Afro went double platinum, selling over 100,000 <laughs> CDs, <laughs> <He's nigga. laughs> CDs. I still can't believe how he's still the highest or the most selling hip-hop artist of all time. Oh, it's a hip-hop artist. Yeah, with physical copies. Which is fucking crazy. Though. Yeah. For a nigga who's in prison today. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. All right, continue. 2006, yeah. let's get there. 2006, the culture is booming now. Um... Simba, Menoli, and J.K. Yembe, they, they, they start Masters of Rhythm. Okay. Dance festival. Now we, we're you tapping know, into the elements of the... Yeah, the now there's, there's the clinch crew. There's, like, the dance culture becomes big. That's 2006. Also, 2006, Nkosana starts Ama Kip Kip. 2006? Yes. That yeah, was 2006. Yeah, 2000, I remember I had, I had my first Ama Kip Kip when I was in grade 10, which was 2007. Yeah. 
it was I'm a keep keep started in 2006. Crazy. And having an I'm a keep keep back then, <laughs> you were the guy, <laughs> my nigga. You, yeah. I'm a keep keep. You lying. You, you know, was, you couldn't get that shit. You so that was that crazy. Shit. And then we had Zulu Boy. 2006 Zulu Boy came out. Yeah, came Zulu out. Boy. A lot of a lot of cats. So came now, out. so now we're tapping into that that hard vernacular rap because now we're moving away from the elements of a sounding USA. No, no, no. We had Zulu Boy. No, we had we had Venac, but it was like that Joseph and like Squatter Camp. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to count Squatter Camp <laughs> in that Venac talk because Zulu Poe came out and he was rapping in and, Zulu. And, yeah, proper, proper. That Inkabi shit. Young Tyler, there was yeah. no yo, 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 like, yo, yo. Like, you see, you see, you see, Pro Kid was Totsi Tal. Mr. Selvin was Totsi Tal, like Kasi Rap. Yes. Yeah. But this nigga was out here now spitting bars, bars. Yeah. And Zulu. Yes. And he was the only one. And it was nigga also, there. shout out to Babu Sipos Tole. He was also signed by Usi Postole. Squatter Camp was signed by Usi Postole. Mr. Selvin was signed by Usi Postole. Proverb was signed by Usi Postole. Zulu Boy, up until Zagwe later, all of them put into the mainstream by Babu Usi Postole, who was at wow. Galo, and then he formed his own record label, Native Rhythms. What, nigga? Mm. <laughs> Hey, she just tapping in today. <laughs> <laughs> she just tapping in. All right, all right, all right, cool. Yo, before I forget, let me Shit. tell you. Let me, let, me, let me tell you how Hidden Force got a deal. Yeah. And how, how, how they got fucked. <laughs> Pause. No, actually, they, they screwed DJ Dollar. Because DJ, DJ Dollar. Shout out to DJ Dollar, man. DJ Dollar put, to together, DJ Dollar. put together Hidden Force. It was his crew. He would pick the beats, the samples. If you feel it like I feel it, yeah. then you re- That's him singing that's that. Dollar. Yeah, that's Dollar singing that chorus. Hey, yo, Dollar. Shout out to you, my nigga. <laughs> you deserve all the flowers, King. And then Dollar took the demo, the, the Hidden Force demo to Galo. Mm. At Galo, um, Hip Hop Scholar, Tabiso. Shout out to Hip Hop Scholar. Is working there. They rejected the, 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 the demo, but Hip Hop Scholar took it, went to pitch it at um, Universe. Sheer, Sheer, at Sheer at the time. Sheer okay. Hip Hop, yeah. And then he opened his own label. So he signed them under his own label and via sold them to, yeah, Sheer. To, to Sheer, yeah. Crazy. And then when. That's a good move. Yeah, when that. But it's bad because. He did that behind Dollar's back. So he left Ooh. Dollar out. He went with the whole crew. Mm, you know? Fuck, man. And Dollar's the guy who's picking the beats. Yeah, the and music. it didn't work out. Eden Force like, released and, and only Scholar, one album. And, and Scholar is the... He's more of the business dude. Yeah, he's a, he's a business whereas, dude. Whereas Dollar is more he's a, he's of a the musician. Knight. Yeah. yeah. He's a, <laughs> Uncle Suge. <laughs> Uncle Suge. You know what I mean? So where we at now? 2006? Yeah, we're in 2007 now, son. So now we're in 207. 207. Niggas have taken uh, Dollar, Dollar and, and, and Scholar have had their thing. Mm-mm. We're in 2007. What's happening? 2007. I am at that time, I'm 16. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the game a little bit. Yeah, the beginning you know? of Back to that's, the City. That's when I was selling the beginning CDs out of my boots. 2007, <laughs> the beginning of Back to the City in Newtown under hey. the bridge. After the club. So, uh, the Le- club is long dead by now. That's my question, mm. right? Is that the same place where Ritual Stores and whatnot was, right? That's mm-hmm. where the club was. No, no, no. The club was next to Carlton Center on Market Street. Um, you see by um, Small Street yeah. and Market Street. What's what is Market Street called now? Albertina Sisul. <sighs> yeah, number 154. I still know the address, nigga. 154 Market Street, Johannesburg. Okay. 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So in Newtown, there was the ritual stores selling selling hip hop clothes and hip hop albums yeah. because music was still not taking rappers. Shout out to ritual stores. Where were they getting their music from? From, from the, the artists. artists. Yeah. So the artists. You record. Now, you record. You take your CDs to there. Yeah. Fuck, fuck the label. Yeah. No labels at the time. There are labels, but there's a lot of. Independent artists that are not on labels, so they Who, just ca- they, they, they record and print to, their CDs to and, you and ours. sell sell them at ritual stores. 
Shout out to Ritual Stores, man. It's a, we we have to tell that story one day. Yeah, we have to tell. We, even if it's a moving yana, the, the red building. You know what I mean? We have, to tell, that, under we the have bridge. to tell that story. Yeah, shit. yeah. If we let that shit die, nigga, I'm telling it now. It's on you. I'm telling it now. Fuck that. We need to. We need to I'm, put I'm, the shit. You see, now we're underground, poison. Mm. Like they did in 2005. We need mm. to mainstream this shit, bro. Yeah. Like this information is crazy, my nigga. Yeah, it's too crazy. Aye, 2007. Uh, 2007, we're there. Mm -hmm. uh, 2008, what happens? Because now we're in. We're in. 2000 Back to the city is up. Yeah. But the Saha is not up yet. No. Aye. 2008, there's Hype Awards. Hype Awards? Yeah, what Hype Awards. Hype Awards. Hype Hip Hop Awards. Ah. Um, they're happening at the Dome. At Where we buy cars. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> At the dome. Dallas is the hottest shit with tippy toes in 2008. Ooh, that tippy toes is, shit was crazy. And yeah, that, that fire, time. that fire track. With the heaven, the, fire, with the... Fire with Bongani Fasi and Muggs. And Muggs. Crazy. Go, go, 2008. Go. Okay. We in 2008 now? Yeah, 2008. Actually, I can't believe you have this shit on the dome. We have, right? we, have, we have awards. And then the pop bottles started in 2008 as well. Shout, Shout out, out to, to DJ Dim Dimples. Yeah, R.I.P. Dims, man. You, Crazy. You know, that, that's 2008. Aye, right, 2008 mm. is Pop Bottles. Pop Bottles and Hyper Wars. Back to the City is when? 2007. Oh, so a year later, these niggas are like, all right, we can do this too. Yeah. All right, so we have, now we have two big hip-hop events. We have two big hip-hop. The Sahas No, 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 we have three. Um, Masters of Rhythm as well. Kicking Masters. Ass. Oh, shit. Kicking Ass. Yo, we need to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, I, I mentioned it. It started you, you, in, you touched on it. Yeah, in 2006. You didn't, you didn't get in because that's a vital Simba, part of it. Yeah, it is. It is. That's why I mentioned that Masters of Rhythm started in 2006. Shout out to Simba. Shout out to Che Kayembe. They held it down on the dance scene. And I've actually in interviewed Che Kayembe. Yeah, the Clinch crew. The Clinch crew. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know. I can't you. These are things I've forgotten about, Brian. Like, yeah, yeah. They just off your door. All right, cool. Let's the repertoires. The rappers, <laughs> the raps, the raps, the raps. Yeah, shout out to the raps, man. Shout out to everybody. Even that nigga that was talking shit now about a Reese and them, on 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 chopping it with Zinger. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Global, ex global. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He was part of the raps too. Mm. So the hip hop thing goes far. Two thousand and nine. I'm in matric at that time. From what I can remember, the hottest niggas out at that time. Shit. You in matric? Questa dropped Sharp Fede in 2007. What? Yeah, he was signed by no, Slicker on Bada Bing. But hear me out, right? Here's where my, hip -hop, yeah. where, where my hip hop journey sort of, sort of takes its place in terms of me deciding that I'm not gonna, I can't rap because I suck, I sound like shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I love this thing. Yeah. Is from well, 2008 to 2009 because there was that show that them niggas had that we have to mm. talk about. Mm. The full clip. Mm. Season Scoop. Yeah. Season with Lomo and, and Scoop Magazzini mm. on the full clip was like, uh, for us as, as kids in matric and in grade 11 or whatever at that time, mm. we'd bump that shit every Thursday, come back on a Friday, and that's all we're talking about the whole day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it also, it also I think, is a monumental space because, like you're saying, Questa dropped that song you told me, but Questa also came through from full clip. Yeah. Ginger Troll, full clip. Yeah. MT. Mm. Not, but we're still on 2008, before, before, before. We haven't the got there. We, we haven't got No, we're still on 2008. You that was around come, that time, come though. Ba come back, come back, slow full down. Full clip was 2008, wasn't it? Yeah, late 2008, 2009. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Full clip was, I remember, I was in high school when I was yeah. listening to full clip. But what I'm saying, 2008, the most important thing that happened for hip hop was. Double HP Ooh. becoming the first hip hop artist to win hey, Best Male at the Summers. Crazy. That was crazy for hip hop. That is crazy. That is, beating like, that, think beating it, Afro pop, crazy. beating Kwaito, beating, uh, beating you know, gospel. With, with, with acceptance speech, music and lights. He, he was like Best Male that year. I don't even, one, I, I don't even, think even I can one, even say anything about that. Though. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy, yeah. Like, 2008 was one of those crazy years. And Shabba. then there was Josie. There was... 2008 no, no, Josie, was crazy. Josie, Josie was also 2008? Yes. Really? Yes. Because it was... It was the less... 
No, no, it was it was yeah, no, it was Josie first. Josie first. It was Josie first before yeah. he dropped the solo album. It was it was Josie first. Yeah, Tippy Toes and that shit came after. Yes, two thousand and eight. What's with the attitude? Yeah, that was the song that. Yeah, was what's also, with the attitude? Yeah, that also changed first. the game. Yeah, what's with the attitude changed the game. Mm. There were still four niggas. Four of them. With, shout out R.I.P. Crazy Lou. Yeah, but like. I think when that song came out, people thought that, okay, we're back with this hip-hop thing. And, they, and Bongani first was genius because he was the first one to fuse Maskandi with Crank. They used to call it Madeline Crank. I remember Crank. Yeah, yeah so yes, hey, Bongani Fassi was, was genius. <laughs> you know? Crank, not Crump. Crank. Not cramp. Oh, crunk music. Yes. Uh, I got you. I got you. That's that uh, little John shit. Yeah, that little John shit. You know. All right, all right. So we get that in 2009. Let's move to 2010 when the World Cup comes in. Where is hip-hop then? It's big, nigga. It's, it's big. Huge, it's big. Like... Niggas are driving Lambos and like shit. Like, WHP is getting, is getting endorsements. He dropped the album with PJ Powers. Um, Jabulani. Mm. Yeah. You know, and he, his name is Jabulani. And he did that Futu Bolo. Those, those were endorsements. So yeah, they, yeah. they melted it for... And then... And we spoke about that earlier. Yeah, well. and then there was... There was JR and Double HP as well. Make the circle Make bigger. Make the circle bigger. That shit was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's like, such a trash song, but mm. fucking made millions, dog. Yeah. That made a lot of money. It also makes me, when I hear songs like that, yeah. like Make the Circle Bigger, chance, yeah. really. Mm. I just feel like some artists that put a lot of thoughts into their work, it gets downplayed when a song like Make the Circle Bigger gets big. Yeah, yeah. Because like I put my fucking heart and soul into the 16 mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and it's a dope 16 but make the circle bigger is the biggest song in the country <laughs> and they're not saying fuck all there bro no it was like it was like they figured the the, the formula you know i get that shout out to, shout yeah. out to jr man and and shout out to tear guess they, they were holding it down tear guess and squatter camp are the only hip-hop acts to win um summer best hip-hop back to back Oh, they won it twice. Yeah, they won it twice, back to back. That's dope, it was that's dope. Guess and Squatter Camp. Tear Guess won four. Taco Blue. Taco Blue, mm. which is which is classic. Yeah. So yeah, they they won they won it back to back, and then we have um, twenty eleven. They big. This Mtlobuam is big. Bosoki Mang is big. And uh, that, I, remember, <laughs> I remember I was at uh, I was at UJ at the time. Yeah. It was my freshers in twenty ten, mm -hmm. and they had they had. Tear Gas performing there, my dog. And like when I think about it today, I'm like, I can't believe I saw KO at that time and, and, and he's still KO today. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in 2023, the same thing I was watching in 2010 mm. is, it's, it's, it's just mind blowing how these guys keep the. That's crazy. It's crazy how. The longevity is crazy, man. And I will like, you know, I will like produce a Pro Kids album, Snakes and Letters. Yeah, yeah, you told me about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. AKA, I didn't know AKA. That. Was AKA part of Books and, and Gamza. Gamza, they were part yeah, of... Yeah, part of the production before, before AKA blew up as a solo yeah. artist. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, 2012. Let's get no, to 2012. 2011. 2011, Amo wins the summer with the principal. Mm -hmm. With the principal album. Fire album, too. Yeah. You know, and... Why are these hoes calling me? Sorry. Yeah, 2011. <laughs> 2011, um... <laughs> You have running with the raps on TV, first of its kind. You know, reality show. Was that the first TV show? No, we had shizness and stuff before. No, reality. Oh, reality yeah. TV show. I got you, got you. Yeah. Got you. It wasn't a hip-hop show. It was just a reality show. About yeah, hip -hop. about hip-hop. Yeah. Mm. That, that's 2011, and that's when AKA dropped Alter Ego, which eventually blew up in 2012 and which took all crazy. the awards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> An album they dropped in? Yeah. You dropped it in 20? 2011. Okay, and then the next year. But it seems like that's the pattern, right? Because mm. even when you're speaking about Squatter, they popped a year after. Yeah. Everyone... That's, that's, yeah, uh, it's the timeline. It's the timeline. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and then he was winning everything. And then he became the, 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 the first English rapper to go gold. He took all these awards, best male at the summers again after WHP was the second one. Okay. Yeah, you know, 2012 was AKA's year. Shout out to, shout out to, to the mega man, RIP. Mm, to the you man. know what I'm saying? And you know what it is. <laughs> mega, mega. You know what it is. We love the boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And 2012, that's when.
back to the city, move from under the bridge to the square, Mary Fitzgerald Square. 2012. Yeah, because right. in 2011, there was a stampede. Yeah, I heard you talk about that on Chopping It Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a stampede then. Yeah, like, fuck y'all. Yeah, and then we needed, yeah, a, bigger, a, we needed a, a bigger space. Crazy blacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they describe us. Crazy blacks. You know. <laughs> All right, 2013, where we at? We gotta, we gotta move. We gotta, yeah, yeah. This episode is crazy right now. I don't even know. Twen it's like we're looking two hours mm. already. Yeah. Crazy. 2013 is Kulichana's year with Lost in Time. Ooh. Twada, like, it was, it was his year. That is an album I really remember. Mm. And I was so happy at the fact that he won, he won best album, right? Not even best hip hop album, like mm. best album at the Summers. Yeah, he, 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 he took the Summers, he took the Metros, he took the Sahas. Yeah, that album was crazy though. Well, the Sahas started in 2012. Why are you skipping? 2012, first South what African hip hop award. The Sahas. Yeah. All right, all right, my bad, my bad. I was a year early. Yeah. All right, so we get to the Sahas now. How does that come about? The the, the, the the Sahas. Yeah, it's, it's Fuck the Summers. Oh, you spoke about it. Yeah. You said something about... Uh, um, they wanted to... Cancel. The, the, the Summers wanted to cancel the hip-hop category in 2011. Um, they wanted to put it with Kwaito and House. Kwaito House hip-hop and call it Urban Pop category. You know? <laughs> Urban so Pop. We, what's, we, what's up with bullshit? What's up with white type of shit? Is that? <laughs> you know, so... so <laughs> We, we protested against that and we won, but we decided not to fight every year, just do our own shit. So in 2012, we started the Sahas. Clean job, man. I like that. Yeah. The, I... first, the, the first ones were at, in Bram, Alexandra Theatre. <laughs> it was a mess. It was a <laughs> yeah, mess. Started four was hours. Yeah, Alexandra Theatre. Well, I think yeah, you okay. It started four hours. No, it was our first time, like, no experience at all. All of us, like, we knew to this shit. It was trash. It was four hours late. What do you mean it was four hours late? Started four hours late. I don't understand what you mean. It wasn't the it on awards. TV? Wasn't they, it on TV? No, they were not live. They were on TV, oh. but they were not live. Oh. I'm saying at the venue, they started four hours late. Because y'all were Like, people around. are sitting down. They're still painting on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, the media had us, bro. Don't lie, Slick. You were too young to be there. That time, we was on the rain with Rashid. It's where the stage had the rain. No, no, that's that's much later. Okay. Hey, so hey, the media had us. The, hey, the media had us. I want to terrible. <laughs> hey, the media had us. There. That's hilarious. That is crazy. So the first Sahas were, were, were shit. Were shit. Technically. In terms of production, yeah. Production wise. Like you guys also were finding your feet, you had no idea. This is the first for us as a hip hop fraternity. Yeah. We've never experienced this shit before. Yeah. You're saying the first ones were uh, an eye opener, properly. Uh, yeah, yeah, a, a learning curve. But they were shit. Not shit. Uh, <laughs> like in terms of organizing, once it got started, things started flowing nicely. Who was who was who who won shit there? Who cleaned up at the first ones? The first ones, I think. Cooley, no. No, Cooley was twenty thirteen. I think the do with like I K um, uh, reason. Reason. Yeah. Shout out to my boys. Yeah. Sees. Audio 3D. I remember PH, who who produced Reason, even won the best producer. Zakwe took. Shout out to PH Raw X, man. Yeah, Zakwe took. Zakwe took, uh, lyricist of the year that year. The first wow. one. Yeah. For which song? For album Zakwe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a nice album. Yeah. Yeah, that album. Yeah, that was a dope ass album. Okay. So the, the, the idea moved properly. It's just the execution was was shitty. Right? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's let's get let's get moving. Where well, we at? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. I mean, from twenty thirteen to about twenty sixteen, mm. hip hop is the best. And and twenty twelve is the arrival of Cash Time. Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Yeah. Cash Time is in A B Kid uh, X. No, no, all of them. Tia Gas A B. Kid X, uh, you remember they dropped an album? Yeah. As Cash Time Fan. Which was a, f which was a fire album. It, it was a fire it album. <laughs> fire it album, was but. a fire album, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then 2013, KO started doing his thing. Alone. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I saw started, someone started, was attributing KO's solo career to themselves. I, I, don't, I don't know who it was, but on Twitter. To themselves? Yeah, they were like, yo, I. Doesn't even matter. I'll, I'll El Tito. With El Tito. Yeah. That's what rolling. I said. You, Tito. <laughs> Tito said, Tito said, 
I don't know if he said it, but like someone said it on Twitter mm-hmm. that KO's solo career only started because of re-rolling. I don't think so. Hey man, no, that's not. It's not my words. No, K- KO was within Tia Gas was was already the guy. They were a crew, but was like you see that guy. Facts. Yeah, he Facts. was. He was, he was already made. Yeah, he was. Beyonce. He was the Beyonce of Tia Gas. <laughs> he was already made. Beyonce. You know, and then he dropped Mission Statement, which is crazy. Yeah. Just when when when, when he dropped. Kara Kara, it was all over. Ah, that's 2014. Now. Yeah, it was done. When Skanda Republic <laughs> dropped, it was over, bro. You know, you know that <laughs> Kara Kara is the first <laughs> SA hip hop song to hit 1 million views on YouTube. Yeah, that I know. Facts. Crazy, that's a, that's, that, that's a milestone. That's, that's a crazy, milestone. man. Like, yeah. It's not something that we yeah, achieve every day. Yeah, 2013, first time we bring international acts. We had Master Ace and the EMC. Oh, word. Yeah. That's the first time you guys, I thought, you know what, now? Mm. Not from, from the beginning. Yeah. Nah, from the, from the beginning, there was no money, but it was a free show. Everybody performed for free. It was free entrance. I will. Yeah, the first, back to the city. There was now no money. Now you guys, uh, make it free again, dog. Nah, never there. <laughs> <laughs> Let us come see these niggas for free. And also, tell Sky Zoo and them to come my island also. Mm, I and I know, I know you guys are bringing Nas this year. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, 2014 was crazy 2014 was a, it was a, I think 2014 was a it's a year of hip hop that like it's a story that it's, has it's to be a new era yeah, yeah like yeah. it's um it's a story that has it's to be a told. golden era because that's when you had your, your dog Shebe Lazar that's when you had at, within the same year you know we had Renz and Nairas you had all these mm, big songs mm. that you could play for an hour Dog, yeah. that's when, isn't that when Cloudy was like, you know what, we need to play 90% South African music. Because <laughs> of the hip hop was so good. You know, I was, it was 2014, 2014 I, to 2017. I, I, that's, that's our golden era. That, I also feel like that. Yeah. Like, that's when, and I like the fact that we've, you've built up the context in terms of you told us the story of where we come from. Yeah. And then we hit this period of 2014 to 2017, yeah. where hip hop is now the main focus of everything. Yeah, yeah. Of all the music, of just lifestyle, culture, everything. Yeah. Especially here in South Africa. In South Africa, yeah. You know? And then, we step out of 2017. Mm-hmm. What happens then to hip-hop? Where is hip-hop at? We're, we're still in 2014. We're coming to 2017. <coughs> I want us to... I want us to <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, yeah. I want us to jump a little bit. Because... I don't know, maybe, maybe there's something you want to tell me between 2014 and 17. Mm-hmm. But what I do know from that culture yeah. and that time is that we got a lot of good music. Oh, yeah, we did. The, the culture crew, the merch crew, the, everything. We mm-hmm. all made money. I got into radio at that time. Yeah. I got into radio in 2014 when... I got into radio in 2013. I'm sorry. Because of hip-hop. Because to do of a hip-hop, hip-hop show. To do a hip-hop show. <laughs> yeah. So with me, when I got into... Here's some history, right? And this is maybe a story that you can yeah. tell from whatever side you see it from. But when I got to YFM in 2014, Season Scoop had just ended. Yeah, yeah. Hip Hop Hot 99, gone. Yeah. There was no longer a hip hop platform. Yeah. Right? So when I got to YFM in 2014, the first thing I did, shout out to Stapura Mtava. Yeah, Mtava Stapura. Shout out to Stapura, Tepo Pule. That's my nigga, nigga. He put me on. Big shout out to him. There was no hip hop show at the time. And they went a year without hip hop. I remember. I, I applied for that for that slot. <laughs> they took speed up. They took speed Speedstar, yeah, they Speedstar took in, boy instead speed. of me. Shout out to my nigga Speed. <laughs> and then and then I, I joined um, Metro FM. Metro, they would with Mosquito. A year or two later, he joins Metro FM as well. Yeah. So what happened? They should have taken me. So <laughs> <laughs> nah, she did. <you, you>, <laughs> hey man, Speed got you on that one. Yeah, but, uh, but you, sure. got, you got all of us because I also wanted. No, that but show. It, was, it benefited the culture for sure. I also yeah. wanted that show as well. Like I wrote a show which was the hip hop floor. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then Speedster did the show. They did the show with Zay Maya. Shout out to mm. Zay Maya. Uh, and they just needed a producer at the time. Yeah, and that's when I feel like that's why I'm like yo between 2014 and 17. Yeah. 16 and 17, we had that, that uh, not, not 16, sorry, 13 and, and 14, there was that gap, especially at YFM, mm-hmm. where hip hop being a circle. Yeah, yeah. One girl, which I'm like, yo, I always respect him for that because he came through and now Nasty and them started coming through. Yeah. You know, all these kids, whoa, Majesty, all these mm-hmm. niggas started coming up from, that's why I'm like, 
I don't know if you have something to say about that period, but I'm just like, that's such a dope period that what what can you say about it? That's when hip hop was. I, I can say golden. I can say that. 2014 to 2017, DJs played a huge role. True. You know, they had big records. You know, True. Dimples had big record. True. DJ Vigilante had a big record. Switch had a big record. Mm, shout out to Switch. Uh, uh, the Mayo Speedster had a big record. You know, so... DJs were moving. Yeah, DJs were, were, were hands slick. on. Shout out to Slick. Yeah. You know, do like I do. DJ yeah. Slick. DJs were hands-on in, in, in pushing the culture forward. That's, I, I don't see it happening now. I know, no, now it's not happening. Anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened with 40, 2014 to 2017. 17, the DJs were very DJs impactful. were... It mattered. Yeah. Fuck, okay, cool, cool, cool. Pick it up from where you... We're getting to, to the end. <laughs> Let's get to the end. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long... But it's a necessary part, man. It's a necessary part. Yeah, no. It's, it's, right, it's, we, it's, we, we, we're now out of the golden era. What's happening to hip hop at that time? Were we stepping from 2017 into 18? What are you seeing from your perspective? It's, it's the new era. You must understand that every, in 2016. Before COVID, just before COVID. Yeah, you know that in 2016, you had Aries blowing up, you had MT blowing up, you had. It's the Nasty, ambitious era. Na Na yeah, Nasty Shout out to Ambitious too. Yeah, they held it down. Yeah, like, fuck. It was crazy and it was. Trap was here. Mm. Like now, trap was fully here. We could trap. Yeah. We were all trapping. Yeah. Sipping lean, all that bullshit. You know, <laughs> cats, cats were doing trap songs, but like in drips and traps, you had. Dog Shabeleza with trap elements, you had Mili Aifani with trap element, but like to go full full on, like the whole project of trap, the MTs and the and the nasties, crazy. Okay. Mm. Okay. That's 2016 into 17, into 18. Uh, what happens just before COVID and after COVID for hip hop? For you, that you've seen. Obviously you you mm. What happens? I think 2018, hip hop started struggling. Mm. Yeah. What in, was in the cause? In terms, the, the rise of the other genre, or niggas are just whack now? No, niggas were not whack. Niggas been dropping songs, but the songs were not on the Ngutu level. They were not on the Karakara level. They were not on the Dog Shebeleza level where you can kill everything, not just hip hop, mm. you know? You fuck Rebecca up yeah. with that shit. So, and then COVID happened, you know? Mm. And then out of COVID, we got Blackie. We got Blackie. We got Blackie we out of get COVID. Black. <laughs> we didn't get, we didn't get, we didn't get Blackie out yeah, of COVID. Shout out to fuck. COVID. COVID shout was out I. to COVID. COVID was I. <laughs> we, yeah, shout we got Blackie shout from COVID. <laughs> 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 Shout out to the vid, dog. You know what I mean? All right, all right. Oh, shit. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So now we're getting... We're getting... In between the era, right, of us sort of forgetting about the old cats mm -hmm. and moving into the blackies. Yeah. What happens there? Because right now, when I think of the dome, there's only a few old cats who are in the 2014 golden era. That are still here. That are still rocking today. A lot of them have podcasts now. <laughs> yeah. Other than other than KO, who else? Casper. Oh Mega. yeah, Casper. Ah, oh. uh, we're talking hits. We're talking. Nigga. We're talking Not underground uh, commercial niggas. poison. We're talking. Yeah. You're playing your shit on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Metro touches. Song of the year. <laughs> getting type you with shit. some horns, dog. <laughs> Talk, song of the year type shit. You know what I mean? Mm. All right, KO's up there. Yeah. Who else, eh? To me, the volume. Stogie, shout out to Stogie, but like I don't yeah. know if he's there. There. No, we we talking like hits. We talking that can talk, kill everything. You're competing with we're not Rebecca taking... Malope. Yes, <laughs> I'm done. Shout out to Stogie. He's been there since day one. Since I mean, the, since Lake Club. Since since '95. Mm. Stogie and him been there since '95. We haven't touched on the homies actually. Their movement was also crazy. Taking our sound international was. Oh, yeah. He opened doors for a lot of niggas. Those niggas opened doors. I think. I think. Like there's a lot of cats that toured Europe, but we're not big here. The Ben Sharper, Ben Sharper. Shout out to Ben Sharp, R.I.P. We would, we, we, we would tour, we would tour Europe. Drumanskap would tour Europe. Europe, dog. Um, there's a lot of cats, man. 
even right now, if, if, even right now, you can black rock. Shout huge, out to Jürgen. huge overseas. Book my tomboy name. They were in Sweden. They were doing yeah. their thing as well. That, that's you, you know what I'm saying. So they figure out. Yeah, yeah. We haven't left y'all out in the history of. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. In episode 101. Yeah. All right. But you forgot the. Who do you forget? Boys and Bugs. Yeah. Boys and Bugs. That was mm -hmm. crazy. That was 20? 16, 17? No, no, much earlier. 20, 2013, 2014, yeah. Yo, Boys and Bugs was a crazy fucking movement. Yeah, it was a movement. They figured out a way not to sell music only, but to sell a lifestyle. Facts. Yeah, Facts. to sell the language, the lingo. Where, where hip hop now lives. Yeah. It's not only about the rap, like yeah. you said earlier. You know. They did that. They did that. They and did and that. very few people can get that. Okay, you release the song, but what else are you giving me? You know, mm. Poison Parks gave you the Mbathlas, they gave you the lingo. Yeah, they, facts. Yeah. It didn't matter. The, that's when I asked you the question earlier. It's like, in 2023, how much does the music matter? Because people like Poison Parks made us realize that the music is not that important, really. Yeah, like name one song from Poison Parks. Fuck all, dog. Yeah, but you know them. <laughs> they, 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 they had like an impact and How? I, can't, I can't give you one joke. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> okay, yeah. Give me a song from Poison Bugs. Uh. Yeah, this, this nigga's digging in the crate right yo. now. <laughs> he can't, he no. Can't, he can't find one. Hey, yo. All right, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on, dog. Let's move on. Where we at now? We're at 2019 now. No, we, 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 we post-COVID. We yeah, we post-COVID. Yeah, yeah, which is, oh no, COVID was 2019, no? It was 2020. COVID what? was 2020, yeah. Oh, shit, that should feel so long. Yeah, it is COVID-19, but it's in 2020. It's vaccines that I took. I shouldn't have took those fucking vaccines. But anyway. anyway. Yeah. So now we're in 2021. 2020 20, and 2020 and 2021, we didn't right. have back to the city. Okay, okay, okay. Here's where I see hip-hop at the time, right? Mm. Now in 2020, 2020, post-COVID is where I'm seeing the niggas we've been talking about now start jumping on the other genre. This mm. genre pops mm -hmm. in, 20, in, in COVID. Yeah. Piano pops in COVID. Mm. Now we start seeing our real niggas, niggas that we've been fucking with since 95, mm -hmm. some of them, now jump onto a new genre that's making moves and making money. Mm. How do we feel about that in, 29, in 2021? I think it's, it's, it's like matters of the stomach. Mm, niggas had to deep, eat. Yeah. Matters of the stomach. We should call this episode matters of the stomach. Yeah, niggas <laughs> had to eat. That's crazy. Mm. And niggas have always had to eat. Yeah. So even when in, in, during our golden era, we saw so many people come into this hip-hop thing because they had to chow. Yeah. Niggas, matters of the stomach, dog. Yeah, matters of the stomach. Niggas had to eat. When Drake did that boom, boom which is stuff, crazy. Did he went mm. for the stomach, you know. All right, all right, all right. 2022. Where we at? 2022. Where we at? Where we at? That's when the master class starts. <laughs> Oh, we, we started 2021. The, um, the podcast started in 2021. Are you for real? Yeah. Come on. What? Yeah. And hey, we've been grinding. <laughs> we've been out here. Yeah. But like right. um, during COVID, no, post COVID, that's when you, you started seeing a lot of podcasts infiltrating the game. You know, we have. Artists a, getting into uh, partying. Yeah. We have a lot of hip hop podcasts or hi podcasts by hip hop artists. What do you think is going on with the people that are falling off at that time? Because, I mean, we've spoken about so many artists, mm -hmm. right? For me, someone I'd be like, okay, worried about in 2022 would be like a Ma'i, who's now, Scandal World is born, is born right? Mm -hmm. KO has been consistent. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. Family Tree was there. We mm -hmm. knew it. It fell apart. Casper's still there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, like, we built this KO thing. KO is still there. No, we built this thing in 2014. You're right. Mm. We, we, 2014 up to 17, we built this thing. Mm. And then post-COVID, it feels like everything just died. Bro. Like, Yonkin T, we got Blackie, we got a couple of other dope niggas on the mm. side. But, like, we're just not competing with Rebecca no more. You know what I mean? Mm. 
Um, Rebecca's my... Well, Mal- in 2020. She's my milestone. Like, if you beat Rebecca, you are the one. We had Mal- in 2020. Shout out to, to, to Zane Zuma. We had Mal- in But... Did it win a summer? Yeah. Did it win a summer? Yeah, it did. Four? Best song. Song of the year. I think... <sighs> Uh, it won something. Didn't win uh, shit, bro. Next. <laughs> didn't win so next. It won so fuck all. Mm. Please fact check me. it, dog. She is being biased. Ah, Google it, Google it. She is being biased right now. For a long time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know that she didn't win nothing, dog. <laughs> Hey, I yo, haven't seen hey, yo, not, too much on sheet, not too much uh, on sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave sheet alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check. Anyway, mm. we're in 2022, right? Yeah. Uh, we're having this fight now yeah, about. Sorry, but you best collab with 2021 South African off the Sahas. This is Sahas. Yeah, we're talking, Summers. talking about Summers. Uh, now we're seeing the flip of, yo, matters of the stomach. Mm. So it's like, fuck the hip hop. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to push. Yeah. We're in 2022. That's what niggas are doing, honestly speaking. Yeah, like, like what I was saying, it matters of the stomach. Some did piano, Big Zulu is doing that Ushuni thing because that's where the money is. Wait, what that? Yeah. This thing of being dope is now dead. I know. The past. So from 88, where all we wanted to do was be dope. Is now fuck being dope. Let me get my, my money. No, back then you would be dope and eat from it. You know, Nas can't can't release an Illmatic album in 2023. Nah. You know. Nah, nah, nah. I ain't pumping that shit. In yeah. Nah. So now you can be dope and starve. It's probably what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like if you're super dope. Yeah. You're probably not gonna make it. I think. Like if you're an actual you must, good hip hop artist rapper, you must. You must. It's not gonna work for you unless you. Like, like I told, up. like I told Buddha T, you need to be <laughs> able to read the room. I can't you believe you just called him Buddha T. Yeah, you need you need to read the room, check what are people vibing to. True, very mm. true, very true, man, very true, Sheed. Aye, twenty twenty three. Where we at today? Podcasting, nigga. Nigga, you took Podcasting. it from you took it from eighty eight. All the way down, no, 78, right? Mm? No, like 82, 82, 82, 82. All the way to 2023, man. Yeah. That, that, that's a long time. That's a, I don't know how old that is, but that's. It's, it's been there, it's been there. Yeah, man, that's, yo. I don't know, you put things into perspective for me today. No yeah. And you, 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 you reminded me of why I love this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this thing came from far, even, even with, with global hip hop, American hip hop. I can do the same from 1973, not because I was there, because I'm, I'm a hip hop scholar. I studied this shit. Word, yeah. son. Yo, and you put us on, man. I don't know if there's, this is probably the best class we've had. <laughs> we're 101, we had to do it. Wow, man. We had to wow, do it. Wow, dude. Like, yeah. shout out to you, dog. You've put things into perspective for me. I've had a, t- a, t- a chance to reflect as well. Yeah. And just look at where I have been in the hip hop space. Yeah. And, this thing feeds me, feeds my kids, it feeds my whole, my whole family eats of hip hop. Yeah. You know? And for us to talk about the history of it and to come down from 82 to, all the way to 2023. Yo, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, it's crazy. Before we close it, um, I'd like to say rest in peace to human, rest in peace to Mr. Fats from Brasa van der Kapp, rest in peace to Mr. Devious. Rest in peace to Robo the Technician. Rest in peace to Ben Sharper. Rest in peace, Mischief. Rest in peace, Flabber. Yeah. Rest in peace, DJ Temples. Word. Rest in peace, DJ Wandy. All auction culture. Rest in peace to Ricky Rick. Rest in peace to Pro Kid. Hey. Rest in peace to Double HP Jabberman. Hey, 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 hey. hey. These are Rest in we peace to about. AKA Super Mega. <laughs> 
Rest in peace to AKA Super Mega. Rest in peace to Costa Titch. Costa Titch. Yeah, man. And I think that's that's where we draw the line. Yeah, I don't man. wanna I don't wanna do, be doing more RIPs anymore, man. Rest in peace to DJ Zondi. All the soldiers who contributed to this shit, man. Everybody that's contributed to this hip hop thing, I just wanna say thank you, dog. That's all. For me, I just wanna say thank you. Like everybody, man. Yeah, oh, every, like every, machine, everyone who contributed. Like, I, like I'm saying, my family eats off South African hip hop. Right. <clears throat> That's all it is. You know? That's all it is. Class as we hatch the past, present while we craft a path from a shared truth. And